on this right hand side but instead he goes into Pereira and Didi does well cuts it back towards the back post Mavadidi's there goes up for the header just over the top of his head now it's Dewsbury Hall this time he drives it low towards the edge of the six yard box where it's dealt with that time and away by a combination of Duffy and Stacey and now the counter's on on that right hand side for Norwich City there's plenty of pace and it's Winks that gets back to do the defending Sargent's in the middle here's Borja signs left hand edge of the penalty area rare foray forward for Norwich Sargent lays it off Saran on this left hand side drives the shot which he probably shouldn't have done and it's blocked out by Vestergaard and out of play on this near side and Norwich will have possession just Sargent the wrong option they get the ball into the feet into the penalty spot he's got his back to goal 1v1 with the defender hold it and try and move, move your body try and get a shot off to Faye played it back out of the box which kind of slowed everything down I think in that scenario there he's full of confidence as we spoke about he's in great form try and roll the defender and get a shot off the fact he passed it back out of the box really really poor decision there from Josh Sargent Sam McCallum fancies the long throw here down this left hand side he's level with the penalty spot and he's launched that in very direct Ooh. it's headed away by Fatawu and maybe the counters on here from Patson Dacker. McLean did brilliantly and they've kept possession nicely have Norwich and it's on this near side with McCallum and then to Gibbs the substitute and here come Norwich again this time down that right hand side but they're taking their time about it Duffy's just going to get back into position as Stacey then gives it to Gibson and now down this left hand side they'll hold it up again with McCallum it's Gibson once more just short of halfway we've got 16 minutes left here Leicester 2 Norwich 1 but signs of life from Norwich in this second half for the first time down that far touchline uh, a ball is clipped forward Borja signs would have been offside I think so I will pick up the loose ball though and drive forward on the right looks like Vardy's about to come on for Leicester City as well Dewsbury Hall's done brilliantly he smuggled that one away and now tries to counter for Leicester for Tawu down this right hand side has got plenty of space to run into he's got support arriving in the middle too but rather than going for the corner flag he goes into Ndidi and Enzo Maresca looks frustrated the crowd are frustrated and Dewsbury Hall will go to that left hand side now it's helped on once more by Doyle Mavadidi on that far side he's 35 yards out from goal left hand side gives it to Winks Winks goes short to Pereira everything slow back right down again for Leicester Fass down this right hand side finds Fatawu again McCallum is there trying to close off any options goes short to Fass that flow of hair in the wings just given short to Vestergaard now Fass again Moresca points his arm out giving plenty of instructions towards Fatawu and then it's towards Fass again Sargent closes it down but Fass gets the delivery in and it goes all the way through the penalty area picked up by Mavadidi on that far side he's got two going to close him down Mavadidi finds Doyle Doyle left footed ball across headed away by Gibson and we'll get the team news at this point as we head to the bet 3-6-5 Stoke against Huddersfield Ian Danter four changes for either side Adam for Stoke out go Kundles, Stevens, Haksabanovic and Mai Income Berger, Baker by Junho and Ennis four changes for Huddersfield out there go Bolka, Hogg Bergsorg and Koroma Radulovic Patrick Jones making his first Huddersfield start of the season Spencer and Sorba Thomas returning come back in live at the bet 365 with us at 3 o'clock it's Stoke against Huddersfield thank you Ian uh, Jamie Vardy is about to replace Pat and Dacker here at the King Power and um, well there's a few standing around I'm not sure whether it's a Pat and Dacker going off or Jamie Vardy coming on I think Pat and Dacker's done okay I mean he had the big chance and that's what we'll be thinking about now if only he could have taken that chance but I tell you, he's going to be hungry, Jamie Vardy. After what happened Friday night, he will be hungry to put that right and score a goal. And now Norris, it's a different, it's a different threat. The pace, how quick he is, how sharp he is, his goal-scoring prowess. I expect him to get an opportunity today for sure. Uh, Mrs Vardy is here today in cap and sunglasses. I've just been uh, showing a picture of her. As Jamie Vardy enters the fray. So something else for Norwich City to worry about. The captain's armband safely placed on. Vardy's arm as well and a Duffy Gibson Vardy battle ensuing you feel but again Leicester just slowed things down again having got in front they're playing more like they did in the first half mm. aren't they just trying to control the game and the tempo well do you know what Norwich are not really doing anything to change that they're not really trying to press them or anything they're almost ambling into trying to get back after the ball so at the minute Leicester don't have to do anything different 
and Didi down this right hand side for Leicester 13 minutes to go on TalkSport 2 2-1 to Leicester Fatou slips as he hits a shot from the edge of the box and it flies high and wide away to our right hand side uh, so every Premier League game this week is live on the TalkSport network starting tomorrow night 7.30 with Newcastle against Everton that's here on TalkSport 2 Forest against Fulham Bournemouth against Palace Burnley against Wolves they're all live on the TalkSport app they're all either 7.30 or 7.45 kickoffs, and then at 8.50 West Ham against Tottenham in the Premier League is our live game on Talk Sport, and that will come with uh, Sam Matterface who's back from his holes and the man alongside me Darren Bent the former England striker will be alongside Sam and Adrian for that one here's Norwich on the attack right for his shot driven in and headed away and he stood firm there did Vestergaard the effort from Borja signs it was on target but the keeper probably had it covered anyway here's Borja signs again and he's just forced backwards because there's not a lot of options around him here's Gibbs Gibbs towards the edge of the penalty area good challenge from Ricardo Pereira good work by Fasnac that time to win the ball back for Norwich and down this left hand side it's McLean he's got support outside him on this near side from Sarar and now from McCullough and Sarar again midway inside the Leicester City half back towards halfway ball picked up by Gibson and now by Duffy and just forced to think again Norwich City as to where they go to try and break down this Leicester back line which is looking in solid shape Pataru's dropped into it as well now so there's five across the back McCallum infield it will be win at all costs for Leicester City you feel at this point yeah it will be at the minute and I think Norwich at some point when we get to the last what, 12 minutes of the game they're going to have to take some risk at one time they're still leaving Josh Sargent up on his own they're not really getting bodies in and around him they're not committing too many men forward and if they want to get something out of this game they're going to have to start doing that I know you leave the likes of Ke uh, Keenan Juice Hall um, Mavadidi who's over there who's played really real Fatawu these guys 1v1 but if you want to get anything out of the game at some point you're going to have to show a little bit more intensity to try and get the ball back and commit more men forward so as things stand Leicester will be back on top of the table they'll all have played 39 game so seven to go and it will read Leicester 85 Ipswich 84 and Leeds 83 of course with Ipswich and Leeds to play later today those games you'll hear on Talk Sport and where it will leave Norwich well they'll stay in sixth place having played a game more than West Brom who are three ahead of them and they'll have played two games more than Coventry who played 38 and have 60 points both those sides in action this afternoon and the goals as they go in you can find those over on TalkSport with Adrian Durham and the team and they're already on air so if you haven't got that TalkSport app you're going to need it this week get it downloaded now you can swipe between stations and you can swipe between commentaries uh, as well over the next week or so in between now and the end of the season where we're bringing you 50 live games in April alone last 10 minutes of the game Leicester 2 Norwich 1 and still no movement from David Wagner down below he's made those two changes but nothing else really changing for Norwich City this time they've gone direct with Gunn having had the ball and Sargent wins it that's all 1-2 with Fasnacht who gets a little pull of the shirt there uh, by Doyle it's spotted by Darren Bond and it's a free kick for Norwich 10 yards inside the Leicester half yeah dangerous this could be I mean again it's a bit, little bit straight to kind of you've got to create an angle to get a, a good delivery into the box but when you've got the likes of Gibson and, and Shane Duffy good size Josh Sargent he's a good side as well you've got to try and create something it's got to be better lifted to the far edge of the box McCallum goes up and wins the header but it's one of those headers that was really going nowhere because no one was close enough to take advantage and Fatawu now will try and break for Leicester tries to pop a ball through to Jewsbury Hall who is there Vardy gets his first touch and it's a good one it's a header down to put him in some space on this right hand side and he just it's very calm though and years gone by it have probably charged goalwards but not quite got that pace anymore oh he's still and quick enough <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you that and he still just keeps the ball and it's forward down that left hand side this time for Doyle Doyle into the box looking for uh, and Didi had made the charge and he's caught in a sandwich there he was the meat in the sandwich between McCallum and Gibson and Gunn could collect the ball and then likes to bowl Norwich away down this left hand side 
Yeah, there are some things that don't go, aren't they? And, and you may just a little bit of pace, but you're still faster than most, aren't you? That's the thing. Do you know what it is for Jamie Vardy? I think it's the first five, five to ten yards where he's so electric still. I mean, yeah, of course, he's not as quick maybe as he once was, certainly a couple of years ago when we saw him destroying Premier League defenders <laughs> season in, season out. But he's still got that burst. And because he's so clever as well, he's, he's still really hard to mark. And I expect him, as I said, if they play the right way, Leicester, from now to the end of the game, I'm pretty sure he'll get an opportunity to score. Well, he scored six as a sub in the championship already this season as Jamie Vardy in amongst the 13 goals that he scored throughout the season. It's only his 28th appearance because injuries have stopped him playing sometimes, but he certainly made some contribution if Leicester were to get themselves out of the championship this season. There's too much on that ball looking for Ndidi who'd made the run to the edge of the penalty area. Looked like a tired ball there from Dewsbury Hall and it'd be no surprise because he's put some yards in today. He has, he's been... He's been good today getting on the ball trying to create chances for his teammates I mean he's had a couple of shots scored a good goal as well was really brave with that uh, carries the ball really well as well so yeah you're right it's going to be a bit of fatigue there but again with this Leicester team if you want someone in possession someone who's a calm and influence he'd be the first one I give it to Norwich looking to build from the back as we go into the last seven minutes plus of course time to be added on a couple of changes coming for Leicester Dennis Pratt and Hamza Chowdhury uh, down below of course the likes of Ricardo Pereira coming back from injury and Didi as well has missed a few games through injury and we'll be trying to look after those you expect so we may well see some changes in those areas Norwich building up now with Sargent on halfway or Fast with a really good challenge and Fast now driving forward towards the edge of the Norwich penalty area Vardy outside him at the byline Vardy chips it towards the back post has to be dealt with by Duffy in fact I think it had already gone out of play and it will be a goal kick to Norwich and this will allow Leicester to make their two changes and it is Pratt and Chowdhury and the first of those changes we'll see Chowdhury coming on to replace Ricardo Pereira well, as we thought it was his first appearance since uh, the end of February against Bristol City on Friday for Pereira as he came out as a sub then but Chowdhury will go on and replace him today and I think Enzo Maresca saying just nothing silly let's just keep this tight shall we and we're also going to see Ndidi depart and it will be Dennis Pratt who comes on to replace him wearing number 26 so sensible changes from Enzo Maresca looking after those players on their way back from injury of course that start versus Bristol City for Ndidi was his first in the championship since December so looking after those that matter right now Enzo Maresca five and a half minutes to play you're listening to Talk Sport 2 Leicester 2, Norwich 1. Leicester going back to the top of the championship with this win. Albeit it may only be for a few hours, but Ipswich against Southampton is no easy game for Ipswich Town at 5.30 today over on Talk Sport. They were, of course, leaders when the day started today. Kieran McKenna's side just defying all expectation when they had that wobble pre-Christmas everyone thought ah oh, this is what we were expecting they would peter out at some point I didn't but just it. <laughs> come again yeah <laughs> they're flying it's absolutely flying long may it continue yeah, it'll be one of those remarkable stories back to back promotions if they can manage it it's going to be very tense in the next four or five weeks and we'll have every step of it right here across the talk sport network the only place you can hear exclusive national radio commentaries of course of the EFL here's Vardy down the right hand side 25 yards from goal Vardy wants some support Fatawu is coming goes back to Chowdhury the substitute who gets his first touch infield to Winks and Vestergaard again inside that centre circle and it's Pratt on that far side who'll have a touch and everyone just wandering around Dewsbury Hall's got his ankles uh, socks around his ankles on that far side sign of a shift that oh Fatawu's done brilliantly slips that one into Pratt who made the run down this right hand side but it's well read by McCallum on this occasion and now Norwich will try and counter there's a foul from Fass and that's going to be a free kick for Norwich midway inside their own half four minutes left Leicester on the way to three points as things stand Darren Ben yeah Leicester doing really well uh, keeping possession of the ball Norwich are playing like a side at the minute with the intensity like they're winning that they're just kind of slow the clock down trying to keep possession of the ball at the minute they're losing you get, commit more men forward try and win the goal they're keeping the ball at the, ball, the ball keeping the ball at the back 
They keep giving it away. Leicester win it back, and there's no intensity to go and get it back. So I don't quite understand what the tactics are at the minute. I mean, there's Leicester settling for, them, settling for that they've lost. Then fair enough, but at the minute, no one's really like. There's no barking orders on there. No one's really getting after anyone, putting a challenge in, trying to win, win the ball back. There don't seem to be anything. They're very passive, aren't they? Mm. In everything they're doing. And as a striker, Josh Sargent, the form he's in at the moment. When you've contributed so little in a game and seen so little of the ball, how do you feel when you're coming off the pitch? Because that must have happened to you time and time again. Yeah, it's frustrating because you're thinking you want to add to your goal tally. You want to push for that, that golden boot. Here's Fataru down the right-hand side. We'll come back to Darren in a moment. Fataru gets that in to the feet of Pratt, then tees up. Chowdhury, who fires over the crossbar. Wrong technique. Side foot from that side, from that side of the box. He was never, ever going to score, but no. As you said there, if, if you're Josh Sargent, you're frustrated. You want, you want an opportunity. You'll still keep believing that you'll get an opportunity, but have not played to his strengths at all. He's, he's had no service whatsoever. Couple more substitutions then from Enzo Maresca. Abdul Fataru is coming off. Yunus Akin is the player that's coming on. And we're also going to see James Justin enter the fray as well. Uh, Mavadidi has come off on this near side as well. In fact, Fataru isn't coming off, it's just Mavadidi that's departing. We'll see who wanders over from the far side. No, Mavadidi and Fataru are the two players departing. So it is Justin and Yunus Akin that are coming on. He's taking his time about it for sure. Gloves on as well today. Didn't think it was that cold myself. But <laughs> and no wonder there's a high five from Vout Fass. And again, a few on their feet around us here. And a hug from Enzo Maresca. Mavadidi's goal via the boot of Ben Gibson. The more I kind of see the replay of the goal, it just looks like there's no communication between Gunn and Gibson, is it? Because you almost feel that Gunn's almost got there with his hand, but Gibson's almost there with his boot, does get a flick off the boot, and that's it, otherwise it's going wide. There's Josh Sargent's penalised for a foul. He's got his head in the ginger locks of his, the American. It was against Vestergaard, and Darren Bond gives it the way of Leicester City, and Sargent can't believe it. I thought a bit, a little bit of both. I thought he would let it go. Josh Sargent's using his body there, rolling the defender. Vestergaard has got his arms all over him. I thought it was a little bit of nothing, really. I would have just let it play. You can see Vestergaard's quite clearly got his arms around him. Poor refereeing again there for me. I think uh, the fact that Sargent had hold of his shirt may well have been the defining moment for Darren Bond, but who knows? I, I wouldn't like to get in the mind of a referee sometimes. Uh, a minute to go on TalkSport 2. 2-1 to Leicester. And, well, look at that work rate from Jamie Vardy. They're 2-1 up. We're into the last minute of the game and he's charging down an attempt by Norwich to clear their own lines on this left-hand side. It's no wonder he's so loved around here, of course. 185 goals in his uh, Leicester career. Third highest scorer for the football club. And it'll be a throw to Leicester on this near side. Enzo Maresco, who is way outside his technical area, just to tell Chowdhury to calm down. He's going to get dragged back in now as well <laughs> by the fourth official James Bell down below. And um, we'll find out in a moment how many added minutes we have for Leicester to see out and secure this much-needed victory. A first in three it would be here at the King Power Stadium. Still time to play, though. Sadar forward to Sargent, who's going to chase after it. Hermanson's there first, though. He was already towards the edge of his penalty area and read that well. There's five added minutes at the end of this game. So we're into those five minutes now. And Leicester have possession on that far side. I mean, possession-wise... What kind of numbers are we talking possession-wise, Darren? It's been absolutely huge for Leicester today, hasn't it? Yeah, 61% to, to Leicester and, and 39% to, to Norwich. But again, we, we've said it, Norwich are comfortable in that type of position, giving up possession. They're not a team that needs to dominate possession to win a game. They can do it the other way, but when you play against a side like Leicester, you've got to do more to win the ball back. And that's the one thing, I think, out of possession, which would disappoint David Wagner, is that they haven't won the ball back enough. I'm surprised it's only 61, because yeah. it, feels, <laughs> it feels like they've had it for the entire game. Uh, James Justin on this near side just tries to slip inside uh, McCallum and then he's bowled over on this near touchline by uh, Borja Sainz and the free kick does go Leicester's way midway inside the Norwich City half. We've had a minute of the five added on at the end of this game and it's Hamza Chowdhury who's going to take his time over this free kick for Leicester City. They look like they're heading back to the top of the championship table as things stand Chowdhury to Fass could be a huge step towards automatic promotion 
bit down this right hand side James Justin's there gets to the cross Vardy tries to get in the penalty area but Gibson's there and alert to the danger and it's another throw down this right hand side for less you just cannot rest on your laurels when Jamie Vardy is in that penalty area can he's, you? he's what defenders call a pest because he's always there or thereabouts and he's, he's so sharp with his movement and just when you think you've got a bit of time here he comes with his pace to shut you down or to put a tackle in I mean for Leicester he's been absolutely outstanding it's quite an extraordinary career there's Justin again and Gibson not for the first time in this game holds his arms out and says what else could I do in those circumstances we've had two of the five added on the end of this game as we welcome listeners to talk sport it's Leicester City 2 Norwich City 1 and the goal from Steffi Mavadidi which was just nicked in by the studs of Ben Gibson's boot and beyond Angus Gunn is the one that looks like it's going to send Leicester City back to the top of the championship for now and could be the goal that maybe just sets them back on route in terms of that automatic promotion push the former England striker Darren Bent is alongside me Norwich have offered very little in this second half have they Darren and, and no one would argue that Leicester are worth the three points today no absolutely I mean even when you look at even the first half there's Vardy flicking it back to Pratt Pratt inside the penalty area Winks tries the shot appeals for handball Winks again on his left foot gets it across Vardy the Leicester City promotion party could be back on and who else is right in the heart of it but Jamie Vardy on as a second half substitute it's 14 for the season for Vardy it's 8 in 9 games and Jamie Vardy once again for Leicester City this will be their first home win in 3 only a second win in 7 games it's taking Leicester back to the top of the championship and Jamie Vardy has sealed it for them Leicester City 3 Norwich City 1 Fox in the box I mean Harry Winks is trying his hardest to get a shot off he has the first one it gets blocked it comes back to him he's almost trying to create another opportunity on himself as he goes to his left and just at the final minute he, he's managed to get a shot off it deflects off the defender and it falls straight to Jamie Vardy and there he is just about what four yards out smash it into the bottom corner and it, it doesn't surprise me with Jamie Vardy he's always there or thereabouts it hasn't always got to be the cleanest of, of assists but it drops down and because he's, he's moving so good and he's so intelligent he knows the spaces to pick up it falls right to him and he smashes it into the goal feels like someone's just released the pressure cooker lid off of the king power and Enzo Moresco is usually one of the calmest men when goals are scored he has gone down that touchline and celebrated like we've never seen him before and Jamie Vardy is 186th goal in his Leicester City career and that will seal the points today and it could make a huge difference Darren Bent to Leicester couldn't it massively and even psychologically with the two teams playing later on Ipswich and Leeds they might be looking at it and thinking oh there was an opportunity when Norwich were winning they probably thought we've got a great chance here but for Leicester with the kind of form that they've been in recently they will be outstanding the fans will be happy with this result and the performance certainly the second half and worth remembering at the end of this game they will have all played 39 so this in essence I know they're kicking off early and the other two play later but this is where the level pegging is and they are ahead of everybody else they are a point above everybody else with this victory moving on to 85 points so they will still have that game in hand at some point exactly and they've, and they've comfortably beaten one of the most informed teams in the league right at the minute only Ipswich and Leeds are in, in better form than Norwich at the minute and it's been quite comfortable for Leicester from a defensive standpoint but when they've got their opportunities they've taken them the pressure button passes over to Ipswich and Leeds Leicester City win three goals to one at the King Power Stadium and it's Jamie Vardy who seals it with the help of Mavadidi and Jewsbury Hall they went behind early in this game with 20 minutes on the clock to a brilliantly worked corner from Gabriel Sadar but they fought back Jewsbury Hall with a header Mavadidi with a shot that took a slight defection off Gibson's boot and Vardy wrapping things up in stoppage time Leicester City are back to winning ways is the promotion party back on that's the question they've beaten Norwich City 
City here at the King Power by three goals to one. It moves them back to the top of the championship. Norwich hardly put up a fight in the second half. They'll stay sick for now, but Coventry have two games in hand on them and are only four points behind them. And focus then moves to Portman Road, 5.30 tonight. Ipswich against Southampton over on TalkSport, followed by Leeds against Hull. Uh, that's over on TalkSport. That gets underway at 8 o'clock tonight. The sun shining at the King Power. It wasn't this morning. It was very cloudy. There were dark clouds overhead. They've been banished for now. Full time at the King Power. Leicester City 3, Norwich City 1. Adam Bridge and Darren Bent, your commentary team at the King Power Stadium. You, you can hear the relief around that stadium as Adam was summing up the action there this afternoon. I'm Ian Danto at the Bet365. Chris Awellamo alongside me. We're about to turn our attentions on TalkSport 2 to the other end of the championship table. Stoke City against Huddersfield is our three o'clock kickoff here, live and free on your home of the EFL. But let's get back to the King Power, have a couple of final words with Darren Bent. So Leicester 85, Ipswich 84, Leeds 83. How are they going to be viewing that result at Ipswich Town, your old club, Darren? Yeah, I mean, listen, first half when Norwich were winning, I'm sure they were thinking, right, here we go, we can get a result against Southampton, we can maybe extend that lead over Leicester, but fair play to Leicester. Second half, they came out, really intensity, front foot, from the get-go, they really dominated Norwich in that second half, created opportunities, took their goals when they came, and it's a really good performance on the whole, because at first you're thinking, the fans were a little bit anxious, the players looked like they were a little bit nervous, but that second half they came out and they absolutely blew Norwich out the water. It seems like Mavadidi and Bataru have found some form today that they've been lacking in the last few weeks for me. Yeah, they have. I mean, certainly Fatou, he was brilliant, I thought, this, uh, today. Getting in the ball, creating 1v1s. Him and Ndidi had that nice partnership. But Mavadidi finished really, really well worked goal. Great little bit of skill to scoop it over um, Jack Stacey's leg. And then the calm Thierry Henry-like finish into that far corner. I think he needed that as well because he's played well this season. But his goals have dried up. And I think today will give him massive confidence. As for Norwich, was that just a case of Josh Sargent being too isolated this afternoon? Well, they just didn't create anything for him. When they crossed the ball into the box, there was no real quality. He became isolated. Second half, they couldn't get anyone anywhere near him because Ashley Barnes' first half was outstanding, was linking with him really well. But they just didn't give him anything that he could attack, that he could get his teeth into. And ultimately, he walks off the pitch. I don't think he had a shot at goal. Darren, brilliant sir. Thanks for being with us this afternoon on TalkSport 2. Darren Bent and Adam Bridge, your commentary team, who brought you that 3-1 win for Leicester City so they are back on top of the championship for a little while at least the Ipswich Southampton game and Leeds against Hull will both be live on Talk Sport 5.15 for Southampton Ipswich 8 o'clock for Leeds against Hull but here on Talk Sport 2 our attention switches next to matters here in Staffordshire Stoke City against Huddersfield Town Stoke five points clear of the drop zone including Huddersfield Town in that drop zone on 39 points can the Potters pull further clear of trouble at home where they've really struggled this season? We'll build up to our next live commentary in just a moment here on your home of the EFL, TalkSport 2. TalkSport 2, official broadcast partner of the EFL. EFL Live on TalkSport 2 with McDonald's. Bring on the ultimate dream team. The classic quarter pounder with cheese and a side of fries. Order McDelivery now on the McDonald's app and get tasty reward points delivered too. 18 plus. Rewards account required. Participating restaurants. Subject to availability. Delivery fees and terms apply. Got a paintwork scratch, bumper scuff or minor dent? Want it fixed like new? Of course you do. At Chips Away, we don't judge, we just fix it. Enter a few details online for a free, no-obligation estimate. We'll come to you, or you can visit one of our car care centres. For professional, affordable car body repairs with a lifetime guarantee, visit chipsaway.co.uk. Chips Away, like it never happened. Get ready now. It's me, Catherine Ryan, here to spill the tea on Now's latest shows and movies like Oppenheimer, an influential figure who go down in history, Mary and George, a powerful woman who's royally determined to get her way, and Barbie, Hi Barbie. a clever independent gal fighting the patriarchy. Remind you of anyone? <clears throat> Catherine Ryan. Now, so much to love. Head to nowtv.com. 18 plus, now account required. Membership sold separately. Minimum speed, 2.5 megabits per second. Terms apply. Some content coming soon. Darling, 
Nothing beats a Jet 2 holiday. Imagine a summer family getaway to Turkey, Mallorca or Lanzarote. Staying for as long as you like with flexible durations. All while enjoying award-winning VIP service. Book summer now with just a £60 deposit per person and spread the cost with flexible monthly payments. Jet 2 holidays. Package holidays you can trust. Astronautal protected. Subject to availability and conditions. Don't break your stride. Get to Screwfix for the latest offers on the brands you love. Like the next generation, more powerful, more compact Milwaukee 18-volt twin pack. It's new and exclusive to Screwfix at just $249.99. And get those lawns in order with a Titan grass trimmer. Now only $49.99. A saving of £10. Shop now on the app at screwfix.com or in-store. Delivery fees may apply. Prices valid until at least 6th of May. Subject to availability. See screwfix.com for full T's and C's. Expect a bigger Easter with Tesco. Get a whole leg of lamb or a boneless side of salmon for half price per kilogram with your Tesco <laughs> Club card. The McCrispy Deluxe is back until the 16th of April. Get both your hands round your tasty favourite with smoky bacon, hot and spicy mayo and a caramelised onion relish. Chicken that hits different. Available until the 16th of April. Served after 11am, subject to availability. Talk Sport 2. Traffic and travel. In Denbyshire, the A55 North Wales Expressway eastbound very slow. It's due to holiday traffic from Junction 25, the Boddlewood Interchange, and Junction 34 at Ulo. In the West Midlands, the M6 northbound long delays and two lanes closed due to a spillage of diesel and an earlier vehicle fire between 9 at Wensbury and Junction 10 Wolverhampton, congestion to 7 at Great Bar. And in Essex, the M11 is queuing southbound due to an earlier accident between 9 Saffron Walden and 8 Bishop Stortford. I'm Samantha D. Here we go. Super hard, super tough, super league on Top Sport 2. Absolutely magnificent. Fast paced, full contact coverage of the ultimate hard hitting rugby tournament. And they're over the line. Broadcasting live commentary of over 40 games across the season. Have we got the greatest comeback in Super League history? Including the Rivals Weekend, the Magic Weekend, and the Super League Grand Final live from Old Trafford. They're back in. To the game. Scrum down for all the rock and roll action of Super League this season on Talk Sport 2. On DAB Plus, online, via the Talk Sport app, and on your smart speaker. EFL Live on Talk Sport 2. Good afternoon once again from the Bet365 Stadium here in the Potteries. Ian Danter alongside me, Chris Olamo, former Stoke City centre forward. We are about to watch two teams who, not so long ago, were applying their trade in the Premier League. But for Stoke City and Huddersfield Town, they're looking nervously over their shoulders at a potential drop down to the third tier of English football. It does come across the face of goal and it's bundled in by Joe Allen who gets his second goal in a week and Manchester United have made pay for being casual right at the end of the game and it's a Stoke City equaliser. Diouf down the right hand side, lovely ball into Shopper Malkin who's out the near post and tucking it home and putting Stoke into a lead. Huddersfield Town 2, Norwich City 0, Aaron Moy, lovely twist and turn in the area. And now to Moy, Moy inside the penalty, chance for Mounier! And he scores for Huddersfield! A lift up the Premier League table. Full time at Ellen Road. Leeds United 1, Stoke City 0. We're in a proper allegation battle at this moment in time. I'm just hoping the lads just keep gritting at us. At the bottom of the championship, it's so tight, it's unreal. Huddersfield 1, Coventry 3. Huddersfield, they remain third bottom. We've got ourselves a remarkable league and you've got nine sides that potentially can get sucked into a relegation. Pressure ramps up with every goal that goes in in the championship every goal means something and that will be exactly the case here this afternoon at the bet 365 stadium the home of stoke city both sets of players out there doing some final warm-ups whether it's stoke or huddersfield players Chris Wellamo is alongside me for the right afternoon to you big man all right good afternoon Ian. good afternoon everyone well we are bringing the team you straight away here from the Bet365. If you're just tuning in, remember Leicester 
went back to the top of the championship just now in our first commentary of four that we're bringing you from the championship this afternoon it finished Leicester three Norwich City won at the King Pass Stadium a late Jamie Vardigal set the seal on the three points but as for the teams here today well both Stephen Schumacher and Andre Breitenreiter make four changes from last time out Stoke busted a few coupons by winning 2-0 at Hull City on Good Friday and the four changes they make see Wouter Berger back from a ban by Jun Ho recalled so too Lewis Baker and Niall Ennis out go Mai Kundal Haksabanovic and Stevens from the starting lineup. Daniel Everson is the goalkeeper. Stokes back four, Kiana Herver, who scored against Hull on Friday. Michael Rose, Luke McNally, and Jordan Thompson. It seems that Josh Laurent, who played up front and scored against the Tigers, will revert back to a midfield role today alongside Wouter Berger and Lewis Baker. Mehdi Laris, Niall Ennis, and Bai Jun Ho in a front three. On the bench for Stoke, Bonham is the sub-keeper Stevens, Vidigal, Campbell, Wilmot Mai, Haksabanovic, Kundal and Manhoof. As for Huddersfield Town, four changes for them as well, out go Bulka, Hogg, Korama and Bergsorg, so all change up front, but still no room in the starting lineup yet for Reese Healy, who scored their consolation against Coventry City in that 3-1 defeat on Good Friday in comes Sorba Thomas, back from a ban Brody Spencer Bojan Radulovic and young Patrick Jones making his first start for Huddersfield this afternoon it could be a 3-5-2 it could be a 4-4-2 Lee Nichols is certainly in goal we've got that right <laughs> as far as Huddersfield are concerned <laughs> Matty Pearson Michael Hellick Jaheim Headley might be a three at the back Brody Spencer could also play in that back three but he could just as conceivably be an orthodox right fullback in front of that David Kasumu Alex Matos Jack Rattoni Rudoni and Sorba Thomas Bojan Radulovic and Pat Jones in their front two Huddersfield's bench Chris Maxwell is the sub goalkeeper along with Bergzor, Karama, Diara, Wiles, Jackson, Daly, Iopenda and Healy so let's take Stoke City first of all Chris your, your old club who have been Jekyll and Hyde but they've been getting more wins than defeats just lately so win loss win loss win in their past five and nobody saw that win yeah. at Hull City coming, not even the most positive of Stoke fans, particularly when they saw the team that yeah, was put out there last week. No, Friday. you're spot on. You know, I think th the big thing is they have to build on that. You know, they have to take the, the confidence from that result and performance. You know, there were some excellent individual performances there uh, and, and bring it and drag it into this game. You know, Are yes, you surprised that this four changes based on I, that? Then? I have. I am surprised. You know, but again, as a manager, you, you weigh up the, the team, you know who's put in the effort. I think you, you should basically stick with what, what what got you the result, but sometimes there's little niggles. Players just can't can't uh, can't be involved. He's brought in some some experience. He's brought in he's brought in leaders. You know, you're looking at uh, Wouterberger. You're looking at Lewis Baker. You know, it's, these these players are they've, they've got everything technical ability. They can go and tackle. They they communicate well. They're box to box. They've got that engine, and they can they bring goals to the team as well. So that's just something that, that that's the, this team's been been very lacking. Certainly, but, Stephen Schumacher will be hoping it brings goals to the team because the one thing about Stoke is the lack of goals here at home. <laughs> the fewest goals in the champion that's championship this season, just 14. Chris, now if you were playing, that'd be different. Might be 15, but it is a really strange stat that a team like Stoke with all that experience that we've just read out with that starting line it should be show, so shot shy yeah you, again it's uh, you look at the, the home form it's, it's been absolutely shocking isn't it what two wins uh, out of the last 12 and, and eight of them there's been eight uh, without without Stoke scoring goals so there's a lot of issues there yeah you have to score goals to put the points on the board you get confidence from that but Stephen Schumacher's come in, uh, he came in, uh, and there was a there was a lift in performances. It he, he, he took a while to get the result. Uh, so, and, and it's it's one of them. That's what breeds confidence by climbing that table, by scoring goals, creating lots of chances, being dominant. Uh, and, and and they were found found, found lacking in the, in that attacking area. So, like you say, they went away to to Hull, got two goals, kept a clean sheet. It's so important that you build on that. Huddersfield lose today. Would you fear for them in terms of their position of the tick? Because they're, they're on the same number of points as Sheffield Wednesday and Birmingham City. So, you know, there's three teams either side of the dotted line. But would you fear for them if it goes wrong yeah, today? I'm already fearful for uh, Huddersfield. I'm looking at OK, they brought in their, their manager. 
Uh, Andre Brighton writer, he got his win, but only collecting uh, two points from a possible 15 after that first win. It just shows you, you look at the Sheffield Wednesday, they had a little period where they were they were on great form. They've mm. got that, that steel, that metal, a good manager, good quality players there, albeit I think they've lost the last three, haven't they? But then you're looking at Birmingham, they've made that change, Gary Routes come in and he, he's, 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 he's experienced in the championship, so you're, you, he'll, he'll get it right, you know, we, we, we implementing certain things when he gets the team on the grass. You're looking at this team, I, I just don't think they're fit enough to play the way that Brighton Ryder wants them to play and you'll see that, they'll start like a house on fire. I mean, really aggressive on the front foot, high line, being really like, direct getting into the attacking areas and then the, the steam goes there's, there's listeners will want to know about this this is interesting because more often than not a manager will come in and actually whether I don't know whether Brighton Wright has said it but managers often come and say the players aren't fit enough which is a bit of an indictment on the guy that's just <laughs> been let go in this case it was Darren Moore and before that it was Neil Warnock at the start of the season I mean is it is it too easy to throw that out there I mean you're, you're, you've obviously you're looking at these players and you're you're saying they're not fit. That you're not. You're not the manager. Well, I've I've watched Huddersfield and I've watched one half with a completely dominant on the front foot, high intensity. I mean, passion, desire, but then quality on top of it. They get the goal, and they're managing the game excellently well. I mean, nullifying West Brom at the time as it was. Mm -hmm. The second half, a completely different team. Leggy, not not being able to track runners, expansive spaces all over the place and then when the ball was coming it was they, they weren't retaining the ball in any way and that's down to fatigue you know you, you have to be concentrated and I, and I mean mentally and physically you have to be at the top level to play 96 minutes plus of football uh, whatever the added time may be and at the minute I feel that it's getting stronger and stronger but if Huddersfield don't score when they're on top then, 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 then they're struggling Huddersfield are in the bottom three on goal difference, 39 points. Stoke City, five points ahead of them on 44. Their manager, Stephen Schumacher, was appointed here in December after the departure of Alex Neal. It was a hugely important win for him on Good Friday at the MKM against Hull City, a 2-0 win. And he wants to see that level of performance in every game now till the end of the season. The squad is capable of performing and I've never doubted the commitment. The lads have worked hard in, in every game that we've um, that we've been here. Uh, we've passed it well in some games. We've defended really well in other games, and then we've had occasions where, when we have a bit of adversity, we we shoot ourselves in the foot. So it's important that we remember what today, what what was good, what gave us our success, and then try and take that into the next one. And as you say, yeah, get to that standard again, get to the level again, because as I say, the points are all that matters now. Obviously, it's coming to the stage of the season where everyone's tired physically. Um, it's took a lot out of the players. It's a long season. We're going into our 40th game, I think, on, on Monday. and um, Yeah, that's so you're going to need to be strong in your mind and a strong character to, to keep going when it's tough. And if we can do that, then we'll be sound. It might have been a bit of a culture shock for Stephen Schumacher coming into this club, Chris Wellamo, because he came from Plymouth who won League One with 101 points. He was League One Manager of the Year. The, the, the Stoke come calling they say, OK I'll give it a go he leaves Plymouth and he walks into this club that are now in their sixth consecutive season of the championship and have never finished above 14th since they got relegated they could have pulled the plug on him or, on him as well here couldn't they early on yeah very, yeah, very true you know I think uh, definitely what he done and the success that they had at Plymouth came way ahead of schedule you know, you're talking probably you know, three, four years they were hoping to be where they are now and it happened in that first season they come up and I don't think you can turn down the opportunity to come to a, a club uh, like Stoke City you know you're, you're talking about the, the money the, the infrastructure the facilities everything and there's an expectation that comes with that as well but Schumacher he believes in his own ability I think he's a fantastic character I think the fans really bought into what he was all about how he communicated uh, but then you have to get results off the back of it yeah the, the performances improved but the results weren't coming and as a player even though uh, if Stoke go out here and dominate this game and, 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 and completely in control but they don't get the result then that's what it's all about it's about putting points on the board climbing the table uh, and at the minute the two teams are, are scrapping in, in, in a dog fight six points today massively former Stoke centre forward Chris Iwellemo alongside me Ian Danta here for this exclusive national radio commentary from three o'clock Stoke City against Huddersfield we have a show brilliant show called the EFL Fan Network that comes out every Thursday 
five o'clock on TalkSport 2. Justin Beattie in conversation with members of the TalkSport fan network. The fan network, if you weren't aware, it's basically the home of club dedicated podcasts where the hosts will join Justin Eastwick to give their thoughts on their club. And let's hear from Stoke supporter Michael Stockley from the Every Step Along the Way podcast who joined Justin recently. These were his thoughts on Stoke's issues this season and whether the man we've just been talking about, Stephen Schumacher, had to share any of the blame. It's bigger than him. I, I think actually I'll come back down to the recruitment size. Um, I know forgetting January, I think what was it, 19 players, 18, 19 players who signed in the summer. And we went for him, which is quite ironic actually, because Stoke fans over the years have been, we need to stop going down the British route. It's not done us any good. Let's go for foreign players. And right. they go completely the other end of the scale. Yes. And from 19 players, you know, Jean Ho, Berger, um, Junior, and beyond that, would you keep any of them next season? I don't think many Stoke fans would. So I think that that's the problem. It boils down to quality. And again, I've, as you said, I kind of touched on just, but Schumacher then needs to recognise that he hasn't got the players that he needs in the building to do what he needs to do. So mm-hmm. stop leaving us so open. If we have to play ugly to pick up points, no Stoke fans are going to complain about that. He's got a free reign there. If mm-hmm. he comes out and says, right, I'm going to play really ugly football, we're going to put two banks of four, not that a manager would ever say this, but we're going to have two banks of four and we're going to just try and squeeze through games. Nobody would complain at that. So there have been casualties at Stoke City this season, Chris. Well, I know Alex Neal was first, but also the head of recruitment, Ricky Martin, who brought in those 18 players in the summer. I mean, that's massive upheaval for any club. Sometimes it can work in your favour. I can remember David Wagner at Huddersfield, the team who were here today, bringing in 17 players at the John Smith the season they went on to win promotion to the Premier League so it can work but all out all in it's it's a risky 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 situation yeah it is you know I think that relationship with Alex Neal and Ricky Martin at Norwich I think that's why those appointments were, were made uh, and then you can't really say anything about the football club they've given their manager all the support 18 players coming in uh, but like you say I think there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes uh, players how they behave uh, making it very very difficult for, for, for managers to, 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 to reprimand and put them into, uh, into, into, their, into their place so I think the, the manager has to be responsible for, for the group of players you can't be, really be transparent about everything that's going on uh, but yeah I think Alex Neal was dealt a very very <laughs> hard hand let's let's put it that way and then Schumacher's inherited that and he's he's, he's got a, 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 a slight tune out of the same group would you agree with that uh, Michael Stockley quote there from that every step along the way podcast that when you look past Bai Jun Ho Bouterberger not many of those incomings have been hits a lot of them have been misses I would have to agree you know but I think that comes with uh, with not consistently getting getting game time as well you know, I think mm. Vidigal started off like a house on fire, five in his first six or seven, and then all He's of a sudden, still top scorer. Was a point, yeah, and that's 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 the issue. Uh, and then there's all, you know, I think when you when you look at, I think players have a responsibility to be professional, not only on the pitch but everywhere. And I think that's something that can 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 affect a dressing room in a negative way. We will talk a bit of Huddersfield in a minute. This is EFL Game Day on Talk Sport 2. We'll continue our build-up to Stoke Huddersfield in a moment. But first, let's get an odds update with our good friends at William Hill. In the zone on Talk Sport 2 with official betting partner William Hill. Get epic value all season with William Hill. 18 plus, be gambleaware.org. Well, of course, Chris, Stoke did not bust some coupons on Friday. I can't imagine what odds they would have been to go to Hull, keep a clean sheet and win but that's one of the great things about this championship the amount of unpredictable results that makes it a tough job for any odds compiler yeah and you look at uh, the comments from uh, the Stoke City manager you know after the the game he was so happy with it the levels you know the quality shown and he understands it how much that takes out of the, the body uh, mentally and physically as well and obviously why the changes were made today so that's the challenge he's thrown to the players go do the same, same again get to those levels and you'll get the result let's bring in Alex Dunn from William Hill at this point Alex what have you got for us today on the Potters against the Terriers yeah fascinating game isn't it Stoke just don't follow up wins with wins the last time they did so was October but they are clear favourites Favourites to do so here, 21 to 20. The draw, 9 to 4. Huddersfield, 13 to 5. A lot of pressure on the Terriers to try and drag Stoke back into that relegation mix. 
if I'm being honest, I think Stoke will probably win. And the bet that I'll be looking at is Stoke to win and both teams to score, which is 7-2. to two. I do think we'll, we'll see a few goals in this one. And if you are looking for a goal scorer, I think Bae Jun Ho is interesting for Stoke. Chipped in with a, a key assist against Hull on Good Friday. And I wouldn't be shocked to see him playing a big part once again. But yeah, looking forward to the game. Stoke, clear favourites. That is understandable. But I've got to say that given that record of following up wins with wins... They are consistently inconsistent. So, take that with a pinch of salt. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. It's pressure on us to call it right then this afternoon, <laughs> isn't it? That's Alex bringing us all today's odds. Thanks to our friends at William Hill. Get epic value all season with William Hill. It's 18 plus. BeGambleAware.org. In the zone on TalkSport 2 with official betting partner William Hill. Giving you the tools for positive play. Take time to think and know your limits. 18 plus. BeGambleAware.org. You're listening to the EFL Championship on TalkSport 2 with McDonald's. Order McDelivery on the McDonald's app and get yourself tasty rewards points. It's 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. This is our second of four championship commentaries today across the TalkSport network. Already Leicester have beaten Norwich by three goals to one. Later this evening we'll also bring you commentaries on Southampton, Ipswich and Leeds United against Hull over on TalkSport from around about 5.15 our coverage will start on those two games so live championship football right the way through till 10pm five years ago Chris and Wellamo Huddersfield Town were a Premier League side and it fell off for them somewhat here they are threatening to drop back to League One level what's gone wrong? Well, it, recruitment I think investment you know, I think Neil Warnock uh, saved them against all odds last season and I've got to say I think he had every right to to put the case to say we're actually weaker this season than what we were last they made a couple of the loans permanent uh, and then obviously the, 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 the squad in itself the numbers just weren't right so Neil puts a little bit of pressure as, as you do as manager and the owner to try and invest and wasn't having any of it that relationship broke down he was loved by the fans the players loved him so straight away Darren Moore comes in and he's, it's, an up, it's an uphill battle mm. I just don't understand why owners and they've got the right to do what they want they, they invest in the club but surely they want unity with their ownership transparency with the manager with the fans the players and be united together because that's what David Wagner got this team to the I, you know, with one of the smallest budgets in the championship got them promoted to the Premier League and kept them in the Premier League first time of asking well, he's made four changes today the Huddersfield manager and a lot of that is with regard to second half performances from players that came on against Coventry City on Good Friday let's hear from the Terriers manager despite that 3-1 defeat to the Sky Blues on Friday he felt that there were positives that his side could take away from the game as they continue their quest for championship survival when we are um, the negative and um, um, uh, speak um, also negative about the performances about the players now um, we have uh, the chances we created a lot we have to score and uh, for this you need hard work and also a, a portion of luck but uh, you cannot uh, have luck uh, when you when you uh, don't win the duels do the so we have to work for this and uh, then uh, i'm sure that we um, yeah that we can win games so i believe in in, in in that thing and the players could see after the second half uh, that it's possible um, against uh, such a strong um, opposition like uh, coventry it was possible to, to, to play a draw in the last 10, uh, ten minutes and uh, it uh, ever ends uh, when uh, when the referee takes his whistle. So um, we have to believe over 96 minutes and uh, so maybe and hopefully on the Monday we are on the, on the winner side. Now looking at the Huddersfield squad that Andre Brightenreiter has and let's look specifically Chris Willemo, the 11 he's got out there today. Who's he relying on more than anybody else to help get them over the line? <laughs> well, you're, you're looking at end product, aren't you? You know, there's not many in the in the league with a better delivery than than Sorba Thomas. You know, he he steps up with uh, his goals as well. I think Jack Rodoni is is such an important player for uh, for Huddersfield. He gets on the ball, he can go and tackle. He's he picks up intelligent positions. His distribution's very good. Uh, Radulovic has come in. Patrick Jones getting his his first start. No, there's, there's not many goals here. There's not many no, goals. There's no there. goals yet for Radulovic, and certainly Jones hasn't scored this season. And then you look at where the goals are coming from, and that's why you look at delivery. Big Mikael Hellick at the back. You know the top goal scorer, isn't yeah. he? Uh, he's, he, he's an absolute brute force in, in both boxes. Well, that uh, would tend to suggest that Huddersfield are a set piece team. 
well, when you've got delivery like Sorba Thomas, there's nothing wrong with that if he puts the points on the board. You know, if, <laughs> if Michael Hillett goes on to score another three, four goals and they win the next, what, three, four games, yeah, that's job done. And then and then he, he gets, Brighton Ritter gets time to implement his style. He's basically come in, he's putting out files all over the place, he's spinning plates and he's just trying to get the result game from game. He, he has no luxury in implementing his style and when he has done, I just don't think the players are quite at the, the, the fitness level to, to go out and do what he wants them to do. Well, we're back to what you were saying right at the, the start of our introduction yeah. that Andre Brighton Wright is concerned that the players are not fit enough to carry out what he wants the Terriers to do out there on the field but they know that Stoke are a little flaky at home the lowest goal scorers at home in the championship this season I remind you with just 14 that they've scored in front of their own supporters with six wins four draws and nine defeats Huddersfield aren't exactly prolific on the road they've only scored 19 with three wins eight draws eight defeats they've got the fifth worst away record in the championship players being led out now our match referee Jeremy Simpson and his assistants both in orange and black as Bradford City equalised late on in a one o'clock kickoff at Grimsby Town in League Two Denver Hume had just been sent off conceding a penalty that Richard Smallwood has tucked away Grimsby who led by goals enough for long spells of that game have been pegged back right at the end and earlier today you heard it live on your home with the EFL TalkSport 2 Leicester City back to winning ways and back to the top of the championship for a few hours at least with a 3-1 win against Norwich City and what we should mention as well about that Norwich scoreline is it gives teams like Coventry City I thought right we can get right next to them in the playoffs Coventry are at home to Cardiff today at the uh, Coventry Building Society Arena so Norwich's defeat has given a bit of encouragement to one or two teams below them Chris yeah that's it you know I think uh, Coventry are, are flying in, in, in great form at the minute with an experienced manager that, uh, that knows how to get his team playing so yes it's, it's for that little business end that little run into the, the end of the season it's all to play for I mentioned Preston North End in that little lot as well because they're only five points off sixth and they go to Birmingham City this afternoon and I'll keep you in touch with goals as they go in around the EFL with a full programme in League 1 and 2 kicking off at 3 o'clock but let's run you through the lineups once again here at the Bet365 with the teams out and ready to get things going this afternoon for Stoke City Daniel Everson is the goalkeeper Kiana Herver, Michael Rose, Luke McNally Jordan Thompson in a back four Josh Lauren, Wouter Berger, Lewis Baker in midfield Mehdi Laris, Niall Ennis Bai Junho in attack for Huddersfield Town Lee Nichols the keeper looks like it's going to be Matty Pearson Michael Hellick Brody Spencer in a back three David Kazumu Alex Matos Jack Rattoni Jaheim Headley Sorba Thomas Bojan Radulovic and Pat Jones in attack and the handshakes are about to take place Josh Laurent just moving forward from the huddle in the centre of the Stoke half he will soon shake hands with Michael Hellick Stoke in their regulation red and white stripes with white shorts and socks Huddersfield in their chain strip of all black with just a little hit a little bit of a hint of blue around the shoulders and a little bit of red around the top of the socks and the Huddersfield fans away to our right in the Caldwell construction stand have come in decent number of good thousand or so I would say and they've been ticket offers for season ticket holders here at the bet 365 to try and boost the attendance here because it's not been full that often in recent times has it Chris Iwellamo this place yeah I, th I think the, the football club can do a lot more like, you know with schools give free tickets out just to try and generate uh, an electric atmosphere here you know because they play a massive part they're so important to the players and uh, uh, they need to feed off that we have a terrific viewpoint up here at the back of the Franklin stand as it's known now at the Bet365 the booth and end to our left which is the end that Stoke love to attack in the second half of games and they'll get to do that because Huddersfield will get the game underway and they'll be kicking right to left as we look towards the booth and end the Terriers and players will take the knee on the instruction of the referee even though Bojan Radulovic and Pat Jones didn't get the memo <laughs> on that and tried to kick off 
So our second exclusive championship commentary about to get underway here on Talk Sport 2. Stick with myself, Ian Dancer and Chris Wellamo, and you won't miss a thing. We turn our attention to the relegation battle. And straight away, Jack Rodoni, who took the kick-off with Bortha. Bojan Radulovic is dispossessed, and Stoke worked the ball up to Niall Ennis, but the ball bounces off his chest and straight back into the path of Huddersfield Town. Ennis will again give chase as it's sent down the right-hand side, but Helic showing his strength, putting it out of play for an early Stoke throw, nil-nil. Yeah, you know, I'm looking at uh, Wouterberger there, a little one, blind pass, just kind of hooks it in behind. You've got a, a willing runner in Niall Ennis, who'll who, who make all those. Rodoni, straight from the kick-off, he's, he's tried to drive through about six, seven players. You've got to release the ball, turn them, play in the right areas of the pitch. So a throw for Stoke City to be taken by Kiana Herver, who scored at Hulse, worked into the box, Ennis with his back to play, again loses that to Helig, who just thumps it downfield for Huddersfield Town. Bright sunshine here in the Potteries, it was pretty miserable when I got here around midday, but the heavy dark rain clouds have disappeared. There's a few white fluffies above us, but a lot of blue sky as well, and about a third of the pitch is in shade, and that's the near side to us as the sun has gone behind the Franklin stand the ball's back with Luke McNally at the back for Stoke City Michael Rose leaves it for Jordan Thompson to clip it down the left hand side Matty Pearson deals with it but it's out on that far left hand side and it's Josh Laurent trying to work the oracle is he want to throw for Stoke yes he has played a minute and a half on TalkSport 2 it's nil nil Throw's gone into the box and it's held up by Ennis with his back to goal. Having to crawl out towards the edge of the area. Lauren puts it back into the box. Hooks up in the air and drops for a little back flick into the area. That didn't quite come off there from Kiana Hoover. And Huddersfield can't get the ball at the moment. They've lost it again inside their own half. Yeah, but Ian, that's a massive opportunity. The ball comes in from the throw-in. Niall Ennis keeps, keeps possession back and in, being strong, round about the penalty spot, he's just waiting for someone to come in and support, come in, uh, arriving centrally into the D, he can just set it for them to get the shot away. Hoover works it infield for Berger, now Baker for Stoke City, gets it back to halfway and McNally. Strokes it out to this near touchline where Mehdi Larice picks it up for the first time this afternoon. Skips inside his man, gives it back to McNally, who chips it, down the right wing, down this near side to us for Kiana Hoover. Good ball works inside for Berger. Tries to skip past a challenge or two. Pirouettes away from another challenge and works it out to the inside left position where Jordan Thompson looks to release by Jin Ho. Down the left hand side of the area, pulls it back to a great area, but Josh Laurent couldn't get onto it. And Huddersfield only get it half clear, nil nil. It was a poor ball from Jin Ho there. You know, I think Thompson and uh, Jin Ho linked up very well. He took it. Uh, in behind his defender, running across towards goal, he's got to just cut it back to Josh Lauren there, and he can get his shot away. Poor, poor pass in the end. Well, three minutes gone, it's nil-nil, and it's all Stoke City. Huddersfield had barely had the ball in the Stoke half of the field. The goal's gone in at the Rodney Parade Stadium, Newport nil, Crawley one in League Two. Crawley just one point behind seventh place Gillingham in the last playoff spot before kickoff. Dion Conroy is given the Sussex club an early lead there. Every goal, once again, means something around Championship League 1, League 2. Good atmosphere here today at 0-0 so far. Stoke fans encouraged by that start their team have made. Chris Uwellemo. No, that's it. You know, I think the players, they have a responsibility to give the fans something to shout about and they're doing exactly that, using the ball very well. Uh, a little bit too patient in my opinion. I think they've had opportunities to put the ball into the box and they've, they've, they've chose to, to keep it and, 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 and try and recycle it and go around the other side. Herver looking to release Larice down the right-hand side. Just slipped and the ball went over his head and Jaheim Headley will pick it up for Huddersfield Town and he's just clipped by Larice before he got to the halfway line and he wants to take the free kick too quickly for the referee's liking and it does look just looking to see what sort of system Huddersfield are playing I mean Headley's playing on the left hand side certainly with Thomas is it a, a five or is it a four Chris Amalo well we'll see when play settles down it looks like it could be a five at times yeah Jack Radoni certainly playing quite far forward this afternoon alongside Radulovic with Jones on the right wing so it's a very advanced role for the Huddersfield number eight in this system alongside Radulovic good work from Niall Ennis good tenacious work to keep possession and work the ball back into his own half for McNally and Rose a bit goes to Bai Junho forced back into his own half 
good tenacious work by Brody Spencer who you nominated before kickoff as one to watch he's got pace to burn Brody Spencer yeah I just think he's, he's got that football intelligence as well you know great energy end product uh, so yeah he's, he's one of them if, you, if they allow him to get into the game he can cause all sorts of problems for Stoke City long kick downfield sails over the head of Medley Larice and will just drift behind for a goal kick to Huddersfield Town away to our right hand side Stoke got a 2-2 draw at Huddersfield in the reverse fixture in September Daniel Johnson and Ben Wilmot got the goals in a game that they dominated but Huddersfield managed to earn a share of the spoils that day that was Neil Warnock's last game in charge before he quit and Darren Moore came in Morecambe won Barrow nil in League 2 Morecambe three points off the playoff places lead through David Tutonda and in the National League Eastley won Maidenhead nil Aldershot won Dorking nil as well in England's fifth tier Vauterberger for Stoke City at 0-0 good ball out to the left hand side for Bai Jun Ho level with the edge of the area Spencer watching him Bai Jun Ho jinks infield then plays a little flick trying to get it away down the left hand side of the box for Jordan Thompson but that's one back down the right hand side for Huddersfield by Pat Jones but his clearance doesn't make halfway. it's back with Stoke once again Berger into the feet of Lawrence who played up front remember against Hull City which raised more than a few eyebrows amongst the Stoke faithful I saw on social media but Stephen Schumacher was proved absolutely right in picking him in that position he scored in that 2-0 win throw into Stoke level with the edge of the area on the far left hand side of the field with Stoke attacking the Caldwell construction end in this first half away to our right hand side and Bai Jun Ho sends the ball back into the centre circle for Luke McNally just drops his shoulder to get away from Rodoni and Bajinho made a run through the centre of the field just to the left of centre McNally spotted the run but just over hit the pass along the deck and it goes out for a goal kick 0-0 well I've got to say it's excellent play from Stoke City being really, really patient with it by John Ho as soon as he released it to McNally he made that uh, run in between the, the centre backs of Huddersfield the, the ball was just a little bit it had to be fired in uh, but the accuracy just wasn't right Sorba Thomas back in the side today after a ban does really well on halfway but again Stokes snaffle the ball back into their own possession and Niall Ennis lays it off for Berger Lloris he's offside as he receives the ball on the right hand side even I could see that he was offside never mind the linesman I think it, Lloris he just tried to get as close to, to Ennis after he knew that he'd got the ball under control there and I think you've just got to have that experience as soon as Ennis goes back you've got to try and hold your run try and be expansive try and come out wide so you've got the full line in front of you he was he was about five six yards wasn't he if, if, if not even more so a free kick for Stoke City it's actually been brought back for a foul before the ball was released to find Larice in an offside position so Jeremy Simpson's gone with the first decision he made Chesterfield already promoted back to the Football League but they're losing a home today in the National League to Kidderminster Harriers Ashley Hemmings for Kiddy early on Luke McNally gives the ball back to Daniel Everson I think that's his first touch of the afternoon in the Stoke goal and that's with his feet on eight minutes to get it out to Michael Rose Rose gets up to the halfway line he's then closed down by Patrick Jones works it into the centre circle and now it's out to Hoover on this near side the Stoke right it'll touch in from Jaheim Headley to win it back for Huddersfield Radulovic who hasn't scored yet since he arrived from HJK in January now Sorba Thomas getting away down the left hand side just beneath us puts a cross in with his right headed away comfortably by McNally and it will reach Ennis inside his own half but near the halfway line trying to flick it back in field to his captain Laurent but it was one back by Huddersfield Town and then there was a foul which sees a free kick awarded for a push on Kasumu. 0-0, we played nine minutes on TalkSport 2. Very interesting there, you see that when uh, Huddersfield were in good possession down this left, uh, left-hand left side, they saw about Thomas and, and Headley, that, that every stroke get everyone back. Niall en mm. Ennis was very much isolated, so when, like you say, Michael Rose come through and put the head on it, you have to make sure that you've got that pace to go up and support them. Chris Willemo alongside me, Ian Danter here at the Bet365. Huddersfield free kick whipped into the box by Sorba Thomas. Headed up and out by Vauterberger for the first corner of the game. And that's gone to Huddersfield Town as there's a goal in lead two. Couple of goals in lead two. Tranmere one, Colchester nil. Kieran Morris gives Tranmere the lead against Beleaguered Colchester, who were one point clear of Sutton, but Sutton have just scored against Swindon at uh, Gander Green Lane. Charlie Lakin puts Sutton ahead 
And Colchester have just equalised at Tranmere 1-1, but it's so tight at the bottom of League 2 with Forest Green, Colchester and Sutton all scrapping to avoid those two relegation spots down to the National League. Here's Thomas with a corner for Huddersfield. Free header and 1-0! Matty Pearson heads Huddersfield ahead to give the Terriers hope, but it's been ruled out for offside. The flag has gone up against a Huddersfield player, impeding Daniel Everson. And the cheers of the Huddersfield fan turn to jeers and the Stoke fans can celebrate as the goal is chalked off nil-nil. Very, very fortunate, isn't it? You're looking at the Stoke players' reaction as well and there wasn't really anyone arguing for anything there. Lingsden's put his flag up. You know, very, very, they have to react against, completely against their own play because Stoke have been completely dominant, haven't they? So it just shows you the, the threat of this Huddersfield side from all set pieces. Well, there's a warning. Yes. And Stoke City have survived that. Somebody must have been impeding Daniel Everson's view of the, the ball when it was headed towards goal by Matty Pearson. So it stays goalless on TalkSport 2. Herbert down the right-hand side, tries to get the cross in, it's deflected out for a corner kick by David Kasumu. Carlisle nil, Lincoln won. What a run Lincoln City are on. Got themselves into the playoffs on Good Friday. 14 unbeaten and Ben House has given them the lead at Carlisle who could go down today to League 2 corner for Lewis Baker to spot into the corner just down beneath us to our right where the Franklin stand meets the Caldwell construction away to our right Walsall 1 Salford nil. Jamil Matt for the Saddlers so a right footed outswinger from Lewis Baker Stokes first corner of the afternoon at the bet 365 whipped into the penalty spot and headed over the top by Luke McNally just couldn't get over the top of the ball and it's a goal kick to Huddersfield Town 0-0 it's an excellent delivery from Lewis Baker there as well wasn't it you know you've got some real uh, aggressive players that can go and head the ball there McNally you know Wouterberger uh, Rose uh, he just was, was hanging there wasn't he McNally just waiting for it to come down got the contact but just couldn't get the direction Leighton Orient 0 Peterborough 1 Hector Kiprianu Hector the protector they call him the defensive midfielder he's given Posh the lead at Leighton Orient Posh been in a bad trotter form lately back to back defeats 10 off an automatic spot now with Derby County getting decent results of late but they lead by a goal to nil at Brisbane Road here at the Bet365 Stadium on TalkSport 2 12 minutes gone in our second exclusive championship commentary of the day and we're concentrating on the battle at the bottom Stoke City 5 points clear of the drop zone Nil-nil with Huddersfield who are in the drop zone. Out to the left-hand side it goes for Stoke and Josh Laurent, the captain. Good ball in field for Wouter Berger. 30 yards out to his right is Lewis Baker. Urged to shoot, does shoot, but it's a comfortable save for Lee Nichols right in front of his goal. But that is an effort on target from Stoke City. Nil-nil. Yeah, again, using the ball very well. Uh, Bijan Ho is, is in the centre of everything. I just think Lewis Baker there, you know, don't listen to the fans, just keep possession of the ball, put it out to the right channel. The Mehdi Laris, who's, who's, who's always wanting the ball, he's always presenting himself. Uh, like you say, never really troubled Lee Nichols in the Huddersfield goal there with a shot from about what, 23 yards, 24 yards. That's former Scotland striker Chris Owellamo alongside me, Ian Dante here at the Bet365. Free kick for Huddersfield Town, straight down the throat of Kiana Hoover. Couple of goals in League One. Cambridge just above the drop zone. Lead Wigan by a goal to nil. Gasana Hadme and Bolton in the top three. Lead Reading by a goal to nil. Aaron Collins for the Trotters. Nil nil here as we approach the quarter hour mark at the Bet365 Stadium. Out to the left hand side it goes. Can Jordan Thompson keep it in play? No, he can't made a great run to get out there Morecambe have doubled their lead incidentally against Barrow in League 2 Gwian Edwards former Peterborough midfielder puts Morecambe further clear so tight in that race for a playoff place in League 2 so many teams involved in it and Gillingham are the team holding on to that final spot and they are goalless at Harrogate at the moment not many goals around in the championship as you'd have heard I've not made mention of any goals going in in England's second tier just yet although he nearly had one here but for a uh, referee's assistance flag which ruled out a Matty Pearson header for Huddersfield Town who are coming forward with Pat Jones on the right hand side and Rose comes across with a no nonsense clearance crew nil Forest Green one Jordan Garrick for Forest Green three straight defeats for them under Steve Cottrell but 
they can still get themselves out of trouble just as tight at the bottom of League 2 as it is towards the top Huddersfield in possession at 0-0 tucked back by Jaheim Headley for top goal scorer Michael Hellick nine goals this season centre half as a top scorer and he's coming forward with a good run works it out to the left hand side for Sorba Thomas deflection on the cross and Berger sticks his foot on it and puts it out of play on this near side for a Huddersfield throw about 10 yards from the corner flag, 0-0. Yeah, Huddersfield coming into the game a little bit more. You know, I think Stoke, that defensive line is, is dropped. Makes it difficult for the midfield. They've got to drop as well. Uh, giving too much respect, I think, to Huddersfield. Allowing them to kind of get into the game and have a good possession of the, of the ball as well. It's just what they do with it. Well, Jaheim Headley's just giving it away to Keanu Hoover. And then a little nick from David Kasumu on Lewis Baker. As Baker turned, just got caught and it's a free kick to Stoke inside their own half, 0-0. Soft one that, I didn't think there was much in that, Lewis Baker, very fortunate there. The Headley was, uh, had every right to go for it. Oxford 1, Fleetwood 0, Oxford United out of the playoffs on goal difference only at the start of the day, they lead Fleetwood by a goal to nil. That's a tenth goal of the season for Cameron Brannigan. And that puts Fleetwood in desperate trouble towards the foot of the table. It's a game that affects both ends. Six points adrift are Fleetwood Town and Charlie Adam these days. Great sliding challenge to win the ball back by Kasumu for Huddersfield. Slides it through to Radulovic, who was then dispossessed by Berger. Has stayed down, but the referee says play on. Niall Ennis giving chase, and Michael Hellett gets there first. And he was being pushed by Niall Ennis, so it won't be a corner kick. It'll be a free kick to the Terriers, and Radulovic is very slowly picking himself up off the turf, 0-0. I, I, I just cannot believe that that has been given as a free kick for Ennis. Just watch this in the monitor. Ennis is running in behind. Hellick comes across and doesn't even look at the ball and puts the arm across the, 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 the neck, chest, chin of uh, Ennis there. I don't understand how Hellick can get the free kick. Shocking decision. Well, free kick it is. And Jeremy Simpson's winding Chris Uwellimo up at the minute it's a good job Chris is at the back of the stand with me balls at the back with Huddersfield clipped up neatly onto the chest of Pat Jones he lays it off for Brodie Spencer down that far right hand side in the bright sunshine on that side of the ground tucked back to Matty Pearson who thought he'd given Huddersfield the lead a little earlier in this first half we played 17 and a half minutes on your home of the EFL Talk Sport 2 more football to come later Ipswich Southampton from 5.15 over on Talk Sport and then Leeds against Hull also on Talk Sport at 8 pm. Now Sorba Thomas, he got him behind Keanu Hoover for a moment but then just held his run, which meant Hoover could get back goal side and then in slides McNally to put the ball out for a Huddersfield throw on this near side, nil nil. Now you're spotting again. I think that first touch comes back. You know, if he takes that first touch down the line, he's you know he's he's basically pulling McNally out of position he's creating space for his uh, attacking uh, numbers as well and he's got the, the that end product that he can put in an early delivery as well so why come back and have to beat Keanu Hoover all over again well I wasn't sure whether it, it was the ball that didn't help him or whether just his first touch let him down either way Sorba Thomas had a lot of green grass to run into which he wasn't able to because of that first yeah. touch Not County nil. MK Dons 1 in League 2 MK just three points off automatic and they lead at Meadow Lane through Max Dean. Now here's Jaheim Headley getting away down the left-hand side of Huddersfield. Slides it into the box and it almost made its way through to Radulovic. But McNally put the ball behind for a corner kick. And we know what happened from Huddersfield's first corner kick of the afternoon. We've got another one here, nil-nil. Well, I'm just looking at uh, Keanu Hoover and Medio Lloris there as well. <laughs> I think Lloris had a proper go at him because that's a, another opportunity. Headley makes a, a timely run in behind it was Helic with a little clip it was an excellent ball but he had so much time and I think it was the wrong decision to try and whip it across it was never going to make it in there for Patrick Jones whipping it you've got to drive commit players drive into the, that 18 yard box yourself there corner for Huddersfield at the booth and end whipped in right footed by Sorma Thomas punched out by Everson and he had Helic right next to him it's worked out to the left hand side and Sorba Thomas but across comes his opposite number Niall Ennis and just hoofs it out of play and stops him getting the ball under control the small margins though Ian isn't it you know Sober Thomas takes a poor touch Ennis should just go and inter intercept it he doesn't need to kick the ball anywhere just keep control of the ball now Jaheim Headley runs into a bit of traffic but Sober Thomas wins it back for Huddersfield 
Tucked into the box by Kasumu Rudoni had made a great run, but that's well defended by Michael Rose this time. Huddersfield growing in confidence as we reach the 20-minute mark on Talk Sport 2 in this relegation clap. And you can hear the Stoke fans there responding, saying, come on, you started well, keep it up. I think that's important, isn't it? You look at that, I think Huddersfield have come into the game for the fact that Stoke have just now they've, they've dropped a little bit deeper they're not moving the ball as quick as what they, they were at, at, at the start and it is the, the fans feed off how, 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 how much uh, control that you're in and at the minute it's, uh, it's, it's looking at Huddersfield are, are, are dominating loads of football to come all 10 Premier League fixtures exclusive to us on TalkSport TalkSport 2 in the app over the next three days including West Ham Spurs Arsenal against Luton, Manchester City against Aston Villa and Liverpool against Sheffield United. Just go to the TalkSport app that I'm sure you've got downloaded for your smartphone by now and there's a live games tab on the homepage and you can see how you can get all the games at any point on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday from that round of Premier League fixtures. I'll be at Manchester City Villa on Wednesday night. Here's Radulovic getting up to the edge of the area, well fed by Thomas, goes for goal, it's blocked by McNally, almost came out to Radoni, Jordan Thompson got a vital foot in to get it clear. But Huddersfield are most definitely growing in confidence. Here's Kasumu now to the right-hand corner of the area, that's a wild effort from the edge of the box. We now two to aim at in the area, elected to go for glory. And it ends up being a goal kick for Stoke City and it stays nil-nil on TalkSport 2. Well, it's far too easy to step down this uh, left-hand side for Huddersfield. Look at Keanu Hoover now, he's got that little limp. You know, he's not fancying it at all. You know, Sober Thomas got in behind there uh, far too easily and then it was an excellent little pass into Radulovic, who again, he's got three to beat. All of a sudden, everyone's backing off, off him and he's, he's he can do what he wants. What, 20 yards from goal? It has to be better defending, communicating, but I don't see Keanu Hoover, I think he's throwing one in here. You're listening to Stoke City nil, Huddersfield Town nil in the EFL Championship on TalkSport 2 with McDonald's. Order McDelivery on the McDonald's app and get tasty rewards points. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. Wouter Burgess has gone down holding his head and the referee's gone to check that he's all right. He's being helped back to his feet by his teammate Lewis Baker. No harm done. And it will be a free kick to the Potters just over the halfway line. And still we wait for a goal to go in in the championship I haven't used my pen once <laughs> on that piece of paper with all the games at Birmingham Coventry Middlesbrough Plymouth Rotherham Sunderland Swansea and West Brom I'm trying to give myself commentators curse by saying that so that a goal goes in almost straight away but it, it's not happened at least not yet nil-nil here but good tempo to the game Chris Uwellamo yeah and Huddersfield are better than they were in the first five or six minutes when they were struggling to get hold of the ball at all well I think that's it you know look at the way that the Huddersfield are pressing now it's a dangerous game you know Stoke were completely in control forcing Huddersfield back and then picking up all the second balls you know at the minute it was Huddersfield that they, they look like the team that's, uh, that, that's, that's dictating the, the tempo of this but game here comes Stoke down the left hand side with their captain Josh Laurent he's got Thompson on the overlap feeds it to Jordan Thompson good ball into the area headed behind for a corner kick good defending in the end there to put it behind by Alex Matos and Stoke have their second corner of the afternoon at 0-0 midway point of the first half yeah better quality from Stoke down that left that left channel John Thompson good energy in the end product you just want them to kind of beat the Matos you know can you lift it you've got five Stoke shots in centrally you want to try and pick one of them out there but just I know he's trying to whip it but I think just kind of hang it up get your foot under it Lewis Baker with a right footed in swinging corner good delivery on it as well headed out from the six yard line for Huddersfield by Michael Hellick Jones trying to hold up and then bring it away down the left hand side he's trying to beat Wouterberger for pace he did but a cross came a good challenge by Kiana Hoover I'm not sure whether he pulled up and might have strained something there but it's a throw into Huddersfield anyway nil yeah, nil he's been touching his hammy for the last yeah he's gone down there isn't he Hoover and he, uh, he just sits down inside his own half trying to take off his left boot or Expose his left hand. It could be an ankle rather than a, a hamstring, I think, Chris Uwellamo, but he's gone down anyway and needs treatment. So it's nil-nil the score. 24 minutes gone on Talk Sport 2. Yeah, it's that'd be a disappointing one, you know, with the, the energy that, that he brings down that right hand side. But in saying that, probably the last five, six minutes, Huddersfield are, are getting a lot of joy. Uh, maybe because he's not mobile, maybe because he's, he's he's carrying some sort of issue. Yeah, it's definitely the ankle, the rotating. Maybe he's rocked his ankle. Mm. I can't think. I can't think when. 
Uh, but like you say, Sorba Thomas, uh, Headley are, are getting a lot of joy uh, for the fact that he's maybe not 100% means all the other outfield players who come to this near touchline down beneath us to have a drink and have a chat with their respective managers Stephen Schumacher to our right Andre Brighton right to our left what was I saying about no goals in the championship that's changed Coventry City lead Cardiff by a goal to nil Ellis Sims what a runner form he's on 12 for the season now for the former Everton man and Coventry four points behind Norwich at the start of play because Norwich as you heard earlier on TalkSport 2, lost 3-1 at Leicester. So they could be back within a point of the top six, Mark Robbins' men. They lead against Cardiff in the CCFT hashtag derby at the Coventry Building Society Arena. So that's our first goal in the championship. Over 50 live football commentaries across our network in April. What a month of football we got coming up. The scrap for the Premier League title. We've got those games Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday in midweek title race and the relegation fight here in the championship five Premier League sides in European competition the WSL title race we brought in the Women's League Cup final on Sunday where Arsenal denied Emma Hayes the quadruple in her final season in charge and also in April the final day of League One and League Two with loads of issues to be decided so keep it talk sport and talk sport too and the very best live football comes straight into your ears courtesy of us here is Alex Matos for Huddersfield Town at 0-0. Good ball out to the right-hand side looking for Brody Spencer. He took a touch that kept it in play, but that allowed Jordan Thompson to get across and put it out of play, down by the corner flag of the booth and end for a throw to the Terriers. 0-0. Yeah, excellent ball there from Matos, just switching the play. Uh, Brody Spencer always an outlet, as is uh, Sorba Thomas on the, on the other side. Just poor touch, let him down, but he reacted well and... Well, Huddersfield, I you didn't see that was poor, wasn't it? Well, the throwing came in from Spencer to Patrick Jones, who tried to take it on his thigh, roll the uh, take it on his thigh rather, roll the defender and get to the byline, but he had a trampoline in his thigh, so it bounced straight out of play for a, a goal kick. Newport nil, Crawley two. That's in lead two. Crawley on the fringes of the playoffs at the start of play. Ronan Darcy has scored the second for Crawley. Back here at the bet 365, it's still nil-nil between Stoke City and Huddersfield Town. Five points between the two teams at the start of the play. Ball given away by Hoover, who's back on the field and is OK to continue. But Sorba Thomas taking him on. He might have hurt himself again there. Keanu Hoover, Thomas goes on the outside of him, pulls it back into the area, headed away by Jordan Thompson. Matos will keep it for Huddersfield Town, who are growing in confidence as this first half continues. And Hoover's really got to be careful because if he is struggling with that ankle, he's got a speedster in Sorba Thomas who can take the ball past him. But they've won the ball back, Stoke. Lawrence, lovely ball to try and release by Jin Ho through the middle, but back came a great challenge from Brody Spencer to take the ball off the Korean and bring it downfield. Rudoni for Huddersfield Town. There were claims for a foul on by Jun Ho by Brody Spencer but Jeremy Simpson saw nothing wrong with it now the ball's fired across the face of goal by Patrick Jones but too much on that goal kick to Stoke City what did you make of that challenge on by Jun Ho there Chris Uellamo 0-0 I, I just don't understand why B. Jun Ho uh, went down you know it was a, an excellent ball from Loren as well I'm looking at it now on the monitor he's got the right side of Brody Spencer he takes a, a, a decent touch no, he's, the referee's got it spot, spot on. Brody Spencer, excellent defender. Yeah, there's a little... Now the arms are both touching each other. I think he's, he's looking for it. But yep. why, why look for it? You've got the wrong side of the defender. You've taken a good touch. Just get your ball between body and man. Don't allow Spencer to come in and make the, the challenge. That's Chris Willemo. You can hear alongside me Ian Danter here at the Bet365. Stoke nil, Huddersfield nil. 28 minutes gone. What an afternoon for Forest Green Rovers. 3 nil up at Crew now. Down the right hand side of the box for Stoke. It's fired across the face of goal by Lloris, but blocked behind by Jaheim Headley for Stoke's third corner of the half. Nil nil. Excellent play. I think Lloris made up uh, Lewis Baker's mind there. A little ball in behind, and I've got to say, Jaheim Headley followed him all the way. Very timely challenge in the 18 yard box as well. There was only Niall Ennis uh, in the box, so, but can, can Lloris just get his foot under it and just dink it up rather than try and go across, keeping it low and hard? Baker with the right wing corner for Stoke City. Right footed out swinger. Terrible delivery. Straight into the near post and comfortably headed clear by Kasumu. But nobody in one of those dark Huddersfield shirts to retrieve it on halfway. So it's sent back into the edge of the box. Headed out 
by Radulovic back helping out his defenders and he has it again as the ball was fired in field and he finds Kasumu in the centre of the Huddersfield half early ball for Matos and Matos who's got help from Thomas on this near side goes back in field to Kasumu Kasumu now looks to play the ball through to Thomas who just checked his run as he tried to burst in between Hoover and McNally at the back for Stoke and then Hoover gives the ball away trying to pass the ball over the halfway line along the deck and then a heavy touch from Lloris and he slides in heavily on Sorba Thomas and he's going to get a yellow card for that challenge Mehdi Lloris and Huddersfield will have a free kick just inside the Stoke half, 0-0 yeah, I've got to say it was a scrappy play from both I think you know no one could keep the ball under control just giving it away there, Lloris takes a big touch and again I think reacts, over commits to the challenge and yeah, the referee spot on, bringing out the yellow card from them there. Sorba Thomas knew it was coming, managed to, to avoid it, but still the contact and intent was there. Nil-nil here. Crew nil, Forest Green three then. Quick goals from Jordan Garrick and Jamie Robson for Forest Green. Peterborough two nil up at Lake Norian. Efren Mason Clark, as the free kick is swung in by Sorba Thomas, flicked away by Vauterberger. Won't quite go out for a corner on that far side, but it's right by the corner flag where Huddersfield will have a throw. Blackburn lead at Sunderland Sammy Smodix goal number 22 for Blackburn who still haven't won under John Eustace but they lead at the Stadium of Light in the Mickey Gray derby this afternoon here on TalkSport 2 I've got Chris Owellamo alongside me former Stoke player Stoke nil Huddersfield nil Huddersfield have it again with Sorba Thomas down this near side the Huddersfield left whips in a right foot across it's too deep for anybody in those Huddersfield shirts and it drifts behind for a goal kick as Cardiff equalise at Coventry. That's 1-1. An own goal from Liam Kitching. Means it's all square at Coventry City. Goal kick to Stoke City. And Daniel Everson's going to receive it short from Michael Rose. And then passes out to the right-hand side of the box for Luke McNally. Who played with Rose at Coventry last season when they were both there. Fired up to halfway, but come to with one back by Helic. Flicked on by Radulovic, trying to get Sorba Thomas away. And McNally with head, a header out of play when he wasn't really under that much pressure. And he's presented Huddersfield with a throw down by the corner flag. Nil-nil. Well, I've got to say, I think Stoke are just inviting Huddersfield on. Now, Everson, the, the Stoke goalkeeper, in possession, yeah. Schumacher wants him to pull out from the back. Huddersfield very aggressive, that front five, front six, on the front foot, trying to make it difficult. But... The Stoke never got anywhere and now they're having to defend Sorba Thomas down the left hand side of the area found by Radulovic he's got Hoover wrestling to win the ball back oh a lovely turn by Thomas turns to the dead ball line pulls it back attempt by Radoni he's blocked in the air and it's volleyed clear by Stoke and Hoover up to halfway but Ennis trying to win it back loses possession it's Huddersfield again Sorba Thomas, left-hand corner of the penalty area. Tries to chip into the box for the run of Rodoni. That's come off a Stoke head. And it's another corner, six for the half, three each. And this is Huddersfield's third. Well, it's an excellent bit of quality, isn't it, for Sorba Thomas? He's, he's dragging it to the, the, the goal line there. And then he's, he cuts it back. He gets his head up and he has that composure to pick out Rodoni. And if it wasn't for a block from McNally there, then uh, Everson's getting asked a few questions here. But that's what I'm saying. When you're getting into attacking areas, especially in wide areas, don't just fire the, a blind cross across. Get your head up I mean, the quality you've got pick someone out Thomas with the corner at the booth and end along the deck and there's a couple of players that have gone down in the box but the free kick has gone Stoke City's way with two Huddersfield players flat on their face inside that 18 yard box but it was a Huddersfield player that had committed the foul as far as Jeremy Simpson was concerned nil nil 12 minutes to half time on Talk Sport 2 Oxford have doubled their lead against Fleetwood Town at the Kazam Mark Harris making it Oxford 2 Fleetwood nil goal kick only finds the head of Helic who would knock it back to the halfway line Matos manages to keep the ball away from Josh Laurent the Stoke captain Sorba Thomas right on the halfway line tries to roll Keanu Hoover gets helped out by Radulovic then Kasumi with a bobbling ball that bounces in the centre circle and Bajin Ho tries to lob it downfield first time for Laurent but that was well dealt with at the back by Matty Pearson now Matos good ball over the halfway line for Jack Radoni turned sweetly got away for a moment then feeds it down the right hand side for Brody Spencer Jones had made a run that's who he tried to find but he overhit the pass Brody Spencer at just 19 years of age not a great deal of experience at this level I just panicked with that ball and Stoke have a goal kick and once again you can hear the Stoke fans 
trying to give their team a bit more encouragement at nil nil yeah well you look at Huddersfield now they're looking like the the, the, the football inside you know Rodoni excellent but a play great ball to Brody Spencer and it has to come back to Rodoni there I don't know why Brody Spencer is head down all, all, only looking at uh, at uh, that Patrick Jones in front mm. of him there I think he just has to has to be better Rodoni's had a proper go as well and rightfully so Rodoni tried to play the ball through the middle there for Jones making a run but it was too straight and comfortably thumped clear coming to the edge of his area by Everson the Stoke goalkeeper but Wouterberger can't keep the ball to play on the far side of the field Chesterfield equalised against Kidderminster Harriers 1-1 there Matt Preston with an own goal so it's as you were at the bottom in terms of the three sides who were level on points, two of whom are in the relegation zone, Sheffield Wednesday, Huddersfield and Birmingham, all nil-nil at the moment, so they're all moving on to 40 points. Plymouth, QPR, Stoke, Millwall, all drawing as well, so they're all moving on by a point apiece. Only Blackburn of those sides in the bottom half of the table are in front. They lead at Sunderland by a goal to nil. Throw in for Huddersfield down this near side Radulovic trying to turn his man had a brilliant goal scoring record Bojan Radulovic at uh, HJK 36 in 78 appearances former Brighton youth another of your former clubs Chris yeah. Abuelamo yeah he's a good player you know I think it just uh, it shows you how competitive uh, the, the championship is good ball across from Lawrence to find Bajun Ho left hand corner of the area had to shield his eyes before he could finally pick it out of the sky but then he's dispossessed is he no he's been fouled by Kasumu and Stoke have a free kick about 30 yards out to the left of centre with nine minutes to half time on TalkSport 2 0-0 yeah it was a better play there I think uh, excellent touch from Jinho as well he's took it out the, the air but yeah he's turned down the opportunity he's created that little manipulated the ball created that yard to get the shot away uh, and then he's turned back into danger and the way that Huddersfield are, are, are playing without the ball, I, I, I've been impressed, you know, they're helping their players out, going two, three players around uh, Juno there. Well, Lewis Baker's favourite to strike this for Stoke City. The Huddersfield wall is lining up pretty much at the edge of the penalty area. That gives you an idea of how far out this is. Jordan Thompson's there too for a potential strike on goal for Stoke City. But Lewis Baker, the former Chelsea man, has taken a good three or four paces back from the ball up he comes right footed and smacks it onto the angle of post and bar where's that going to land in the side netting in the end and it ends up being a goal kick and Lewis Baker puts his hands behind his head how close to giving Stoke the lead with an extraordinary free kick nil nil it was an excellent free kick wasn't it up and over the wall Paul's always moving it went so high Ian and it stepped last minute Lee Nichols had no chance whatsoever it's come off of the bar and then it's McNally that gets the, the rebound coming down yeah just just uh, to the right of the of the Huddersfield goal and it's come off his back and hit the side net in there I just don't think he could get there I think Spencer def defensively for Huddersfield had, uh, had covered that distance and made it difficult for McNally to get a clean contact 7 minutes to half time on Talk Sport 2 Stoke nil, Huddersfield nil. Goal number 23 for Sammy Smodix. Sunderland nil, Blackburn 2 now at the Stadium of Light. And a big goal for Burton Albion, who are just above the drop zone in League One. They lead Barnsley by a goal to nil. Joe Powell for the Brewers. And Northampton are one up on Port Vale. They've won their last two under Darren Moore, trying to get themselves clear of trouble. But Mitch Pinnock has put Northampton ahead at six fields. Here are the bet 365. At nil nil, throw into Stoke. Ten yards from the corner flag, left hand side. Sent in by Thompson for Berger, who tries a flick, but it doesn't come off. It's one back by Rudoni. Plays the ball up to Radulovic, who held the ball up well, at least initially, under pressure from Rose. But the ball went out of play for a stoke throw on the far side of the field eventually. And they've worked it back into their own half. Here's Luke McNally. Finds Lewis Baker, whose free kick really was terrifically hitting it. Must have smacked the poster bar at such an angle. It almost went straight up in the air and ended up landing the other side of the other post the near post to us as it went into the side netting super hit from Lewis Baker but not sure whether Lee Nichols would have had that covered had it been on target poor pass from inside his own half there by Lewis Baker and he's running to his own teammate there Mehdi Larise, and then a strong challenge by Alex Matos and a yellow card 
for that challenge in the centre circle immediately brandished by referee Simpson and it's a free kick to Stoke City inside the centre circle so that's one booking apiece now Larice for Stoke and now one for uh, Matos for Huddersfield yeah I'm looking at that and it's, it's not a free kick you know I think Matos actually gets a uh gets a, a challenge a contact on the ball first and it's just that momentum then uh, that, that takes uh, by Jun Ho so the referee was this side of it it looked like a strong challenge but Matos was actually uh, first one there Berger just neatly to keep the ball away from Rodoni five minutes to half time still waiting for the deadlock to be broken here in the potteries and a crossfield pass from McNally tried to find by Jun Ho in fairness to the Korean he had to shield his eyes from a previous pass that was sent out to him. That was dropping out of the uh, sky right into the sunshine behind the stand where sat in, and he just couldn't get a handle on it, and it went over and out for a, a, a throw in. Yeah, well, we can see it here. The sun, you know, has caused a few issues, uh, especially defensively for Stoke as well. But uh, it wasn't a bad ball, but when, when you're trying to kind of pluck it out of the air, it does make it difficult. Stoke coming forward into the Huddersfield half down this near side with Keanu Hoover. Poor touch in field from Josh Laurent, the captain, but Huddersfield couldn't get the ball cleared. There was, though, a push on David Kasumu, so that will be a free kick to the Terriers, pretty much midway point of their own half. Yeah, Lewis Baker there, there was just no need to, to put any pressure on Kasumu there. You know, I think Huddersfield did overhit it anyway, and Baker just reacted to giving the ball away with that poor touch. Uh, just trying to kind of get in the face there. The referee was spot on to, to call it back. Lee Nichols has the ball rolled back to him, the Huddersfield keeper. Clips it downfield for Radulovic, held it up well. Jones was running across the line but lost possession. In steps Helix, stepping in front of Ennis. And then he has a wild swing as he tries to take the ball off Walter Berger's toe. And now running through the middle, Mehdi Larice couldn't get past Matty Pearson at the edge of the area. What a challenge from the former Luton man to win the ball back. It's an excellent challenge defensively, isn't it? I'm looking at Larice there, I think he's going to get there first. Matty Pearson's chasing him all the way and he goes to ground, but timely challenge on the ball as well. Fantastic, fantastic little ball in behind as well. Big goal at the bottom of the championship. Middlesbrough 1, Sheffield Wednesday 0. Michael Ihekwe has put the ball into his own net, so Borough lead against Sheffield Wednesday, who started the afternoon in the bottom three. 0-0 here. Stoke trying to pull themselves further clear of trouble. Remember, Stoke started the afternoon five clear of the drop zone. Reading equaliser Bolton in League One. That's 1-1. One, one. Lewis Wing for the Royals. Stoke have the ball back inside their own half. Two and a half minutes of the first half to go on your home of the EFL, where it will all play out in April and May, whether it's the end of the regular season and of course the playoffs every single playoff match semi-finals and final will be live across the network as we find out who wins promotion and who has to fight another year in the same level of football Gillingham lead at Harrogate that's a big goal in that playoff push for lead two Gillingham holding on to that last spot and they lead at Harrogate through George Lapsley up there in North Yorkshire here we are in Staffordshire as we approach half time. A couple of minutes to go before we find out whether Jeremy Simpson is going to add any time on. So free kick to Stoke City. Everson thumps it right footed down the inside right channel. Flicked on by Larice, but nobody had made a run ahead of him. So it just bounced twice and through to Lee Nichols in the Huddersfield goal. Nil nil. In fairness, there, you know, I think when uh, the ball comes from deep from McNally, uh, Ennis pinned in Helic very well. It allows Lloris to come and win the ball. So that's what you've got to understand that either Mai Jun Ho or Josh Loren, can you get in behind and be that, that supporting runner? Because Ennis has done his job. Lloris has won the ball, so there has to be a willing runner to try and get in behind and stretch Huddersfield. Rodoni bursting forward now for Huddersfield Town, gets to the edge of the area, tries a shot that's blocked by Everson, plunging down to his left-hand side. Rodoni gets it back, right-hand corner of the area, works it in field, Jaheim Headley takes a touch, slides it into the box, Radulovic looking to make room, scores brilliantly! Oh, what a goal! What a time to open your account for your new club! Bojan Radulovic has put Huddersfield ahead in the last minute of the first half, turning inside a defender and a right-footed curler that Everson could do nothing about. What a goal in the context of the relegation fight. 
Bojan Radulovic makes it Stoke nil. Huddersfield won. Well, it's an excellent goal. You know, taking the and the one the signs were coming. You know, Everson makes that save from Radoni, comes back out to Radoni, keeps the ball well. I've got to say, I think his first touch, Radulovic is, is outstanding. Skips round McNally, and then he puts it right into the top right hand corner there. You know, Everson doesn't really get a chance, but I just it's far too easy. It's in the 18 yard box. So I understand you can't just throw yourself into the challenge. But yeah, he skips round, doesn't really take any backlift from his, his foot and just kind of guides it and just steals it and not power, just steals it into the top right hand corner. It's an excellent finish from Radulovic. His first goal for his new club. He had a record of pretty much a goal every other game for HJK. But a really classy piece of finishing from the Serb in what is his eighth appearance, I think, for Huddersfield Town. And they lead as we have moved into three minutes of minimum added time at the end of this first half on TalkSport 2. Massive goal. You can't really say that it's came against the runner play as well. I think Huddersfield have grown into this game and, and, and controlling the tempo. Yeah, you're getting little flashes from Stoke, but they're at home. They started very well and they've allowed Huddersfield to get into this game. So we're into that three minutes. Good strong header from McNally to keep the ball away from Sorba Thomas, but Huddersfield will have a throw as Larissa who is on the deck, trying to keep possession for Stoke and now Stephen Schumacher well who'd be a manager you win 2-0 at Hull City on Good Friday and all's well with the world and <laughs> everything's positive 45 minutes into the next game and you're about to go in at half time at home trailing to a team five points beneath you in the relegation dogfight this game does your head in sometimes <laughs> Niall Ennis giving chase he's on his own Ian. he's on his own you know, balls yep. going up. He he's is very isolated, you're right, Niall Ennis. He's having to work very, very hard. I mean, they played a front two against Hull with Ryan May and Josh Lauren in a genuine strike partnership. But they've gone back to a sort of a... Well, it's a 4-5-1 effectively at times, isn't it, Chris Ouellimo? Yeah, it is. You know, I think uh, you're looking at, and that's that's what you've got to do. You know, I think the formation should change as as the, as the game's going on, depending on what battles you're winning and, and losing. Uh, but they've got the intelligence and they've, they've they've grown into this game, and now it's about making sure not to concede and keeping this, the energy levels the same, which is something that I've noticed over the the period of time under Brighton writer that it's uh, it has it falls away the second half. We played two minutes of the minimum three that are being added on but there'll be a few more seconds because the goal went in as we ticked round past 45 minutes here at the Bet365 you're listening to Talk Sport 2 EFL Live Stoke nil, Huddersfield 1 so Huddersfield winning Birmingham drawing Sheffield Wednesday losing it means Huddersfield are out of the bottom three as things stand and here's Sorba Thomas getting the afterburners on down the left hand side rides the challenge and Lewis Baker got clipped free kick to Sheffield Wednesday almost level with the Stoke penalty area well you're seeing players for Huddersfield that are committed Sorba Thomas ran about what 55 yards there with the ball Lewis Baker ch chasing them all the way you know it's, it's, a, it's a poor challenge you know I don't understand it you know the, obviously Jeremy Simpson the referee is is uh, is, is, is is, is pulled it up as a, as a free kick but it's just poor you just want commitment you know I know it's you're, you're at home mm. I want to see some passions desire communication go and, go and fight for everything fight for the cause free kick taken short by Thomas works it down the left hand side to Radulovic down by the corner flag they're killing time at the end of the first half here not the end of the 90 by keeping the ball in the corner flag and there goes the half time whistle and Stoke City's home hoodoo is for the moment continuing they find it difficult to score goals here and having won at Hull on Good Friday they find themselves behind at the break against Huddersfield who as things stand are out of the championships bottom three and what a classy goal for Bojan Radulovic to score to open his Huddersfield account late in the first half it was good work initially from Jack Radoni who found Radulovic in the box first touch to drop his shoulder sell the defender and fire the ball home at the other end Lewis Baker had a free kick smack against the angle of post and bar that's as close as Stoke City came in the first half but most definitely Chris Wellemo, Andre Brighton writer goes in at the break far by far the happier manager yeah definitely I think uh, especially with the way the game started the first 5-10 minutes completely uh, uh, Stoke City were in control and then his, his players showed that experience I've got to say and, and controlled the game from then on you know you're looking at 
you look at the, the chances created, but it's a ball retention. You know, keeping possession, winning second balls, doing all the hard graft, and then having that quality to then bring in your, your quality players. You've seen little flashes from Stoke, you know, the Reese has caused a few problems. Uh, Jun Ho on the, on the left hand side has is, is, is always been an outlet. But then I want to see those relationships, Keanu Hoover uh, having uh, getting around the outside, Jordan Thompson at the other, and creating for Stoke City, but Brighton Wright will be happy. It's just about keeping the levels up for the second half, which is that, which they've not had to answer for those questions. Chris and Wellemo alongside me for the ride this afternoon. The boost you could hear incidentally the referee just making his way to the tunnel always gets it doesn't he no matter what the score is let's get off uh, to the game that will bring you at half past five over on talk sport because we're almost halfway through our exclusive championship commentaries for the day because coming up at 5.30 it'll be a chance to look back at the top of the table Ipswich against Southampton Leicester won today by three goals to one against Norwich City. Leeds don't play until 8 o'clock tonight, so there could be a whole load of musical chairs at the top of the championship before we're done tonight. Ipswich Southampton will be a 5.30 kickoff. Our coverage will start around about 5.15 on Talk Sport after Adrian Durham has read you a classified check. Joe Shannon and Dean Ashton will be your commentary team. Ipswich have been incredible this season, haven't they, Chris Malamo? Just what... Just, defying all expectations yeah just carry that momentum on you know I think everyone thinks so highly of Kieran McKenna I think team of the team of the season for me you know I think you know you always say oh they're going to fall away they went through that little rough period and that little blip in January and then what do they do they go and recruit you know they bring in Kiefer Moore one of the <laughs> the best January signings for my opinion in the championship I think Dean Ashton would agree with you on that he joins us along with Joe Shannon at Portman Road ahead of kickoff. how you doing fellas all Hi good. Dan, Hi Chris, how are you doing? Yeah, we're doing very well, thank you. Huddersfield lead here at Stoke, so we're looking at the bottom of the championship. You guys, with your commentary at 5.30, very much looking at the other end. Let's talk about Southampton actually first, uh, Dean, Joe, because they look set fair for automatic promotion, but they had a really dreadful blip. What, what went wrong there for Southampton, which is why they're off the pace now for automatics? I just think the standards they set were so ridiculous with that club record run, unbeaten run, that it was inevitable almost that when that when that stopped that there might have been just a, a, a tiny sort of um, dip in confidence as you would as you would say and, and ultimately you know you, you can't really keep that up you, you can't not in not in this division with how competitive it is so actually I think maybe we should be saying a little bit of that maybe Southampton slightly overachieved in that period but they're still right there with the games they've got coming up including this one this afternoon Joe they'll probably feel like they've still got a great chance I think you're absolutely right Dean as well look they made club history didn't they it yeah. was 25 games without defeat in all competitions they'd never had a run like that before in the entire history of the club um, came to an end with defeat by Bristol City in mid-February at that point going into that game they were second a point ahead of Leeds who were in third at the time with a game in hand as well but I think Dan as Dean has said they'd set such a great standard for such a, a long time late September to mid-February they were unbeaten hard to keep that up and you know any team is going to have a, a potential negative reaction when they lose a game and of course it's worth saying Leeds and Ipswich have been pretty impressive since exactly that time you look at the the run that Ipswich in particular have been on that's propelled them into a position where they'll go back to the top of the table with a win tonight Kieran McKenna's team so the standard at the top of the league has just been so impressive all season long lads just quickly before I let you go we've seen teams do it before come through the divisions from league one through the championship and then straight to the Premier League I think Paul Lambert's Norwich did that and there was a Southampton team that did that too but would not this particular potential for Ipswich to do it be even greater than those two lads given that the, the lack of resources relatively speaking that Kieran McKenna's had to call upon I think so I think it's it's quite incredible the run that they've been on it and you know the, the doubters they've had so many doubters throughout the whole period um, that everyone seems to just be waiting for this can't carry on this this isn't right you know they haven't got the the squad and the stars of all the other sides so how can they still be up there you know they have they you know maybe don't win a couple of games and and everyone thought here we go that'll be it then they've had their they've had their their bright moment and then they plow on again and 
look, I, I know there's going to be plenty of jobs coming up, I'm sure, um, in the summer a managers look at. And Kieran McKenna, whether he takes them up or not, is going to be high on so many people's lists. I think he's just been <coughs> incredible, Joe, in the way that he's got the best out of some of these players. And I think, Dance, um, what makes it really special for me, this Ipswich team, and I'm not saying that, you know, that Southampton team under, I think it was under Nigel Adkins, 2010 to 2012, when they had those back-to-back -back promotions. Of course, there have been lots of exciting attacking football for those Southampton teams of, of that generation but I just think the way that Ipswich have played this season the fearlessness with which they've approached the championship 81 goals and the resilience in this team as well so often they've scored late goals at crucial points the number of times they've come from behind to win games in the championship this season I think it just feels like something special is happening at Portman Road and if they can get the job done in the next seven games then you've got to say hats off to Kieran McKenna for that and Dean did that comedy nose and glasses I gave you help to help you get into Portman Road unscathed <laughs> just about just Good. about stance I think there was just one one lonely old guy that just about recognised me as I was walking oh, in oh really <laughs> oh they're the ones you've got to worry about <laughs> enjoy the game boys thank you Joe Thanks, Shannon Stan, and cheers. Dean Ashton who are with us at Portman Road remember that game is on Talk Sport the coverage starts at around about quarter past five kick off at 5.30 and then straight after that on TalkSport Leeds United against Hull City Lucy Ward will be alongside Jim Pratford for that game at Ellen Road to round off our four exclusive championship commentaries half time classifieds in just a moment and then full second half commentary from here at the Bet365 Stadium where the score at the break Stoke City nil, Huddersfield 1 EFL Live on TalkSport 2 with McDonald's. Bring on an iconic double act. The classic bacon double cheeseburger and a side of fries. Order McDelivery now on the McDonald's app and get tasty reward points delivered too. 18 plus. Rewards account required. Participating restaurants. Subject to availability. Delivery fees and terms apply. Search kayak for great deals on flight. Wait, that doesn't say flight. Search kayak for great deals on car hire. Hmm. With Kayak, you can compare hundreds of car rental sites to find great deals. Even better, you see costs up front. And if it's flexibility you're after, Kayak's got a handy free cancellation filter. Lovely stuff. So, next time you're searching for flight car hire, car hire, at home or for your holes, search Kayak and go see for yourself. When Magnus started out as a carpenter, he used a manual saw. First, he made tiny chairs, then dog kennels, and then a duplex treehouse. But when Magnus was asked to build a suspension bridge, he had to leave his manual saw behind and embrace something better suited for the job. Manual saws. They're kind of like the bank account you use for your business. Just because they were right once doesn't mean they'll be right forever. Maybe it's time to switch with the current account switch service. Got a paintwork scratch, bumper scuff or minor dent? Want it fixed like new? Of course you do! At Chips Away, we don't judge, we just fix it. Enter a few details online for a free, no obligation estimate. We'll come to you or you can visit one of our car care centres. For professional, affordable car body repairs with a lifetime guarantee, visit chipsaway.co.uk. Chips Away, like it never happened. We've all been there. You start some DIY with great intentions, then 50 minutes later your face is red, the air is blue and your hair is getting greyer by the minute. That's a job for the Trust a Trader professionals. Let them get that list ticked off while you relax with a cuppa, safe in the knowledge that every trade person's passed the Trust a Trader 15 point assessment. <sighs> Find the Trust a Trader professionals at TrustTrader.com. Get an expert guide to all the latest speculations, signings, and spending sprees with Simon Jordan's Football Business Roundup on TalkSport with Tesco Mobile for Business. From the latest deals worth knowing to where the big money transfers are going, get the inside track in one all covering football finance feature. Simon Jordan's Football Business Roundup on TalkSport with Tesco Mobile for Business. Join Tesco Mobile and get business phone bills for up to 40% less than the big mobile networks. Tesco Mobile, if it helps. For applicable terms and verification, see tescomobile.com slash business. Wednesday night, the Premier League, live on Talk Sport. And he's gone straight in! Arsenal versus Luton. What a great bit of play. Coverage from 7, kickoff 7.30. Wednesday night. On live football dynamo Talk Sport. 
PGA Tour, Valero Texas Open, live on TalkSport 2. Thursday night from 10. As the world's golfing elite go head-to-head at TPC San Antonio, hear full swing-by-pitch-by-putt commentary of all the action, direct from Texas. PGA Tour, Valero Texas Open. Thursday night from 10, live on TalkSport 2. On DAB Plus, online, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker. EFL Live on TalkSport 2. This is Game Day exclusive on TalkSport 2. I'm Ian Danter at the Bet365 Stadium. Let's take a classified check on all the halftime scores on this Easter Monday. Starting with... This is Game Day. Halftime classifieds. Skybet Championship. Full time, you heard it earlier, live on TalkSport 2, Leicester City 3, Norwich City 1. These are all half times. Birmingham City 0, Preston 0, Coventry 1, Cardiff 1, Middlesbrough 1, Sheffield Wednesday 0, Plymouth 0, Bristol City 0, Rotherham 0, Millwall 0, Stoke 0, Huddersfield 1. Full second half commentary to come here from that game right here on TalkSport 2. Sunderland 0, Blackburn 2, Swansea 0, QPR 0. West Brom nil, Watford nil, Ipswich Southampton kicks off at 5.30 live on TalkSport, Leeds Hull kicks off at 8pm also live over on TalkSport. Skybet League One. These are all half times, Blackpool nil, Wickham nil, Bolton 2, Reading 1, Bristol Rovers nil, Shrewsbury nil, Burton 1, Barnsley nil, Cambridge 1, Wigan nil, Carlisle nil, Lincoln 1, Charlton nil, Stevenage nil, Cheltenham nil, Exeter nil, Leighton Orient 0, Peterborough 2, Northampton 1, Port Vale 0, Oxford 3, Fleetwood 0. Full time from earlier, Grimsby 1, Bradford 1, these are half times, Crew 0, Forest Green 3, Harrogate 0, Gillingham 1, Mansfield Accrington was postponed, Morecambe 2, Barrow 0, Newport 0, Crawley 2, Notts County 1, MK Dons 1, Stockport 0, Wimbledon 0, Sutton 1, Swindon 0, Tranmere 1, Colchester 1, and finally Walsall 1, Salford City 0. There you go, you bang up to date with all the half time scores, and I'll keep you updated during the course of our second half commentary here as to other goals that go in that could have massive effects and implications right throughout the EFL. Stoke City players already back out on the field. Huddersfield players just emerging from the tunnel down to our right hand side so Stoke will be heading for the booth and end that they always like to do at the start of the second half of matches and I can see that Sead Haksabanovic is being ready to come on right at the start of the second period here Chris well a moment just looking to see who's missing from that Stoke lineup at the moment I can see Everybody, Niall Ennis is out there, so it's not a striker replacement. Bai Jun Ho is out there. Bit of a guessing game, I can't work it out. Who's missing? Louis Baker. It could be Louis Baker. Yeah, I can't see him. Well spotted. Yes. Ten points to Chris Uwellamo, <laughs> spotting the missing player. So, yeah, Louis Baker goes off, and on in his place comes Sead Haksabanovic who is on loan from Celtic and he only has one goal to his name so far this season that was against Bristol City back in September so he comes on and that may well change the way that Stoke line up here in this second half could be a genuine front partnership between Haksabanovic although he can play out on the right hand side can't he Chris Uwellamo yeah I think bringing on an attacking player was, was definitely the the, the thing that had to be done because uh, Ennis was just on his, his own so isolated all the time you know, I think Lewis Baker okay or, or other than a couple of decent corners and the free kick you know he's, energy wise I don't really think he brought too much to the game so hopefully Haksabanovic can come on and make a positive impact so back underway on TalkSport 2 Stoke in the red and white stripes white shorts and socks heading to the booth and end away to our left as we look from our commentary position right on the halfway line at the back of the Franklin stand Sorba Thomas wins a free kick. So the Stoke lineup: Everson in goal, Herva, Rose, McNally, Thompson, Laurent, Berger, Lloris, Haksabanovic, Bajun Ho, and Ennis. As for Huddersfield, Nichols in goal, Spencer and Thomas are the wing backs: Pearson, Hellick, and Headley, Kasumo, 
Matos, Jones, Rudoni and Radulovic. Here is Patrick Jones darting down the left-hand side of the box for Huddersfield. Oh, it goes through a crowd of legs on the six-yard line and nobody could get a touch. Drifts out to the right-hand side and Huddersfield retrieve it. What an opportunity for the Terriers right at the start of this second half, inside the first minute. It's out on the left-hand side with Sorba Thomas. Swings it in from deep, brought down offside. Radulovic tried to finish, but the flag had long since gone up against the Serb. But that crossing from Patrick Jones seemed to magically evade everybody in there, Chris Iwellevo. He'd done ever so well, didn't he? You know, I think to take it to the line and then just get his head up and, and cut it across. It went through everyone. It came to Haksabanovic and he's thinking, do I touch it? And he just had the awareness to just let it go. But then Radulovic finds himself in an, in an excellent position. Great first touch. You can see the confidence is definitely there with the big man. Radoni down the Huddersfield right. They lead by a goal to nil here at Stoke. And Radoni taking on Michael Rose. Lays it off to... Patrick Jones gets to the byline, pulls it across again, a dangerous ball from Jones, this time from the Huddersfield right. And Brody Spencer was in there, and he was near post, he was closest to it, but he just couldn't get the finish in there. 1-0 Huddersfield. Well, Patrick Jones is just showing he's, he's having a little go at Radulovic as well, and rightfully so. You know, he's playing across that attack in line, it just shows you, first one was left foot, this one was right foot. Excellent quality, getting at his man, being direct an end product as well, right on the money. Huddersfield have been awarded a free kick about 20 yards into the Stoke half of the field to the right of centre. It'll be Sorba Thomas to take it, right-footed. Real good delivery over the head of Radulovic, put up in the air by McNally. Keeper comes to claim inside his six-yard box and gets it well. Bowls so it out under on to Bajin Ho and Stoke can try and counter. But a foot in by Alex Matos and then Patrick Jones puts it out for a throw and the Huddersfield fans you can hear roar their approval for that bit of defensive work inside Stokes own defensive third with and without the ball they've been better you know you're looking at uh, Bayer Ho they're just trying to kind of get the ball down keep possession but getting caught because out without the ball Huddersfield have got two three players trying to go and win it back and it's, uh, it's been impressive well I think back to what you said to me Chris before the game about how leggy Huddersfield looked in the second half of the game against West Brom uh, that you were talking about, was it? Um, That's right, yeah. And how different the performance was. Can they keep this level of intensity up for Andre Brighton Writer? They lead Stoke by a goal to nil. They're going out of the bottom three in the championship as things stand and dumping Birmingham City into the drop zone. Birmingham nil-nil with Preston. Sheffield Wednesday, the other team in trouble losing at Middlesbrough at the moment balls rolled up to Niall Ennis for Stoke given away by Ennis on halfway you can hear the moans and groans around us at Huddersfield, Huddersfield are starting the second half well and getting the first to many second balls it's just little things you know Ennis here he's under no pressure whatsoever great first touch but then the the, the the layoff is just not enough on it and just giving the ball away but it's happening all over you know you're looking at Loren now getting all on the ball in the, that defensive uh, midfielder role but he's not moving well, move, Stoke aren't moving it quick enough has to be better intensity all over the pitch with their passing Haksabanovic worked it out to the right hand side it's dropped for by Jun Ho who would just flick the ball out to the left hand side bit of space for Jordan Thompson on this near side Bajin Ho's gone ahead of him now but Thompson's moved in field to the centre of the half laid back to him by Larice. Jordan Thompson again plays it out to the right hand side a touch from Kiana Hoover brings it into the box left foot in effort what a goal Kiana Hoover two in two for Kiana Hoover and Stoke a level within five minutes of the restart super left footed strike Lee Nichols grasping for thin air only Stokes 15th goal at the bet 365 this season but you won't see a better one it's all square 1-1 one, one. what a goal what a goal I've got to say he's come in it's came from nothing whatsoever Jordan Thompson taking responsibility driving centrally and then he gives it to uh, Keanu Hoover and he's got nothing on I'm saying they can take put, put a cross in you've got bodies in there just takes it on to his left opens up the left hand goal but he's still got a lot of work to do Ian. he just steals into this into the top left hand corner and goalkeeper has no chance whatsoever what a finish into his second loan spell from Wolves at Stoke City Keanu Hoover got four goals last year that's his third for this season 
with that strike and what a different stadium the Bet365 is now all square and Huddersfield pegged back but here they come the Terriers down the left hand side with Sorba Thomas but he's got two players around him one of whom is the goal scorer tracking back to nick the ball off him so 1-1 by Jun Ho darts over the halfway line out to the right hand side and Larice gives it back to Bai Jin Ho in field Haksabanovic in acres of space on this left hand side Larice tries to lay it off to Bai Jin Ho he's been dispossessed wants a foul nothing doing says Jeremy Simpson and Kasumu bursts through a couple of challenges and then he's hauled down by Luke McNally on halfway and that is going to be a yellow card for the Stoke centre half 1-1 on TalkSport 2 great start to the second half here yeah excellent there uh, good play from Huddersfield Kasumu's breaking he's got the full half to run into as well and McNally just has a little tug and rightfully so I think he took one for the team knew that it was coming but he had to take Kasumu down there but yeah much better listen to this place you know when you when you, when you show a little bit of quality Keanu Hoover I've never seen him do that in the first half no. after he got his goal broke his neck back and, 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 and helped uh, Josh Loren out defensively Thomas with a free kick for Huddersfield just shy of the halfway line drills it downfield but onto the chest of Wouter Berger and volleyed away by Haksabanovic it will go out of play for a throw goals going in elsewhere Sutton have doubled their lead at home to Swindon in their bid to stay alive in League 2 Jack Bycroft with an own goal making it Sutton 2 Swindon 0 Lincoln have a second at Carlisle that's 2-0 Joseph Taylor for Lincoln going to go 14 unbeaten brilliant run that Michael Skubala has been on the former Leeds United coach since taking over at Lincoln City Notts County 2 MK Dons 1 they've come from behind to lead at Meadow Lane Notts County Alessandra Jatta with the second for Notts County and here come Huddersfield with Patrick Jones dispossessed down this near side by Jordan Thompson Wouter Berger just toe ends the ball away from a challenge but it's one back by Shaheem Headley who tried to thread the ball up to Radulovic inside the area but he drove it so far it went way ahead of anybody in a black Huddersfield shirt and out of play for a goal kick yeah again it's Huddersfield without the ball excellent Stoke over playing in that defensive third I think Jaheim Headley was the right pass to play just couldn't get that uh, accuracy of it Radulovic was wanting it just wants it to feet there Mehdi Larice for Stoke finds Haksabanovic in the centre of the Huddersfield half Huddersfield in their change away strip of the black shirts with little flicks of blue and red around the shoulders defending the booth and end that Stoke are attacking as they love to do Blackburn 3-0 up at Sunderland Ryan Hedges with the third surely that's the first three-point haul in the John Eustace era at Blackburn to ease relegation worries there Chesterfield 1 Kidderminster 2 Zach Brown puts Kinney back ahead of the promoted Chesterfield and Cheltenham big goal for them they lead Exeter by a goal to nil at the completely Suzuki no win in seven in the first of those relegation spots two points behind Burton at the start of play <coughs> but they have the lead through Ben Williams and Bolton have a third against Reddings now 3-1 John Daddy Bodvarsen for Bolton who started the day in third Stoke coming forward and forcing Brody Spencer to head the ball out of play on this near side for a throw and Chris Willemo saying get on with it which Stoke tried to do and they've almost conceded a corner Huddersfield but Matty Pearson's header down went the right side of the corner flag from his point of view and Stoke have a throw down the left hand side as they're attacking the booth and then to our left in this second period all square 1-1 and all to play for I just have to say I think Stoke City just have to start things a little bit quicker you know Haksabanovic has an opportunity to take a quick throw in and really uh, put uh, Huddersfield under a little bit more pressure but they're allowing them to set up get into position you know someone I want to, I want to see a bit of aggression someone taking control Hoover with a cross it deflects in the air Haksabanovic brings it down on the six yard line but couldn't get past Brody Spencer and then he fouled Spencer in trying to win it back and Huddersfield can clear their lines almost broke for Sad Haksabanovic but he just couldn't get the ball under his spell 1-1 one, one. Well, he doesn't have to get the ball under control I think he can just take the, take the shot on you know you're, you're 7 yards 8 yards from goal on the angle just make sure you get a good connection with the ball uh, and stay at goalwards there's that many bodies in front of Lee Nichols a little deflection there not even a deflection but you can, you can cause problems a couple of changes being made and Ryan Mai is coming on to replace Niall Ennis for Stoke City and also coming on is the wonderfully named Million Manhoof 
who moved from uh, Vitesse in January hasn't scored yet Netherlands under 21 international so that's three changes made by Steven Schumacher Haksabanovic came on right at the start of the second half now two further introductions with Mai and Manhoff on the field it just shows you the, the quality uh, of depth and depth as well that, that Stoke City have uh, a lot of these players come in and not really hit the, the floor running not really got up to speed with what the championship's all about and yeah you just it needs to it needs to be corrected Burton Albion won Barnsley won Barnsley equalised through John McAtee at the Pirelli Stadium uh, Mehdi Lloris was the other player that went off incidentally along with Niall Ennis for that double change that saw Manhoof and Mai come on Balls played behind Brody Spencer as Huddersfield tried to break down the right hand side so it's going to be a throw for Stoke City down the left hand side Ipswich Southampton to come over on Talk Sport at 5.30 for our third commentary of the day across the network and then at 8 o'clock tonight Leeds against Hull Plymouth nil Bristol City 1 Plymouth in relegation trouble and Bristol City lead down at home park through Naki Wells and Exeter equalise at Cheltenham 1-1 one, one there Luke Harris Haksabanovic for Stoke City at 1-1 one, one here 57 minutes played on TalkSport 2 finds Jordan Thompson left hand side back in field for Haksabanovic tries to play a 1-2 at the edge of the area Helix slides in strongly to get it half clear but it's back with Stoke Mai tries to nutmeg Brody Spencer but he gets it clear looking for Radulovic on halfway but he couldn't control it and Stoke have it back well you look at the changes that Steve Schumacher's made but well, here's Hoover coming forward fancies another goal what's well, three and two but this one he snatches at somewhat and drags a good four or five yards wide one one just look in the attacking area of, of, of Stoke look at the players that are there you've got four or five players with uh, Bai Jun Ho and behind he's going for it I understand why he's going for it but he's leaving himself a little bit light but it's something that Huddersfield aren't saying right okay let's just keep doing what we're doing get on the ball and we'll take advantage a couple they're of actually, changes they're, they're actually coming back and trying to defend and it's creating more space for the likes of Lorraine and uh, Wouterberger a couple of changes for Huddersfield and the goal scorer is going off Bojan Radulovic and Rhys Healy is coming on to replace him had a groin injury that's really kept him out of the, the team for a long time but he scored the consolation against Coventry City so he's on and uh, Delano Bergsorg is also on the two players have gone off one is Bojan Radulovic as I mentioned the other is uh, Pat Jones who putting some lovely crosses right at the start of the second half yep. didn't have any joy from those worked hard for his team so Healy gets his first touch on halfway breaks for Bergsorg the other substitute and now on this near side Brody Spencer little back heel into Haksabanovic and out it goes for a throw Sunderland nil Blackburn Rovers four Tyrese Dolan really putting Sunderland to the sword this afternoon they are not enjoying life up there on Weir side. Throw into Huddersfield Town at 1 1. It goes straight out of play via Wouterberger for another Terrier's throw. More live football in the week Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Premier League fixtures, all 10 of them exclusive on national radio to the Talksport network, either on Talksport or Talksport 2 or on the app dead easy to follow whichever game you want out of those 10 across Tuesday Wednesday Thursday whether it's on the app exclusively or whether it's on TalkSport or TalkSport 2 I'm going to be at the Etihad Stadium on Wednesday night with Troy Deeney to watch Manchester City against Aston Villa after Manchester City dropped two points yesterday in that 0-0 stalemate against Arsenal Harrogate 1 Gillingham 1 in League 2 Anthony O'Connor equalises for Harrogate Stoke lose out to Rhys Healy who's barged into by McNally and that's a free kick to Huddersfield he's got to be careful McNally he's on a yellow card but the referee's decided the free kick is enough punishment but this is a free kick about 25 yards out and pretty much just to the well pretty much central just to the left of centre somebody's going to fancy a cracking goal here for Huddersfield Town 1-1 one, one, an hour gone yeah I'm looking at that and I'm, I've got to say McNally's a very lucky boy because he should be getting a yellow card for that as well no intent in the in the play and you can see the Huddersfield uh, players all get round uh, Jeremy Simpson there and express exactly that but very dangerous free kick and there was no need for him to give it 
no re need for him to make the challenge he was running away from goal well Jack Radoni has put the ball down and the Stoke wall has got to come back a few paces just inside the 18 yard line and uh, Reese Healy who's just onto the field of play he fancies a go here as well both him and Rudoni standing either side of the ball Rudoni to the right of it Healy to the left who's going to take the strike on goal there's a draft excluder behind the wall by Jin Ho's the unlucky man that's got a lie on his side for this free kick and the referee just checking to make sure that nobody's obstructing in front of goal Rodoni will take it left footed and it's only just whistled wide of the post by half a yard or so and it's a goal kick to Stoke City over to our right hand side 1-1 one, one the score on TalkSport 2 yeah well struck I'm looking at uh, Daniel Everson there he was comfortable wasn't he I think he knew exactly where his, the post was and it was going wide but like you say I think uh, like Stephen Schumacher has to just have a little think about McNally I think when anything else now I think he's going to receive a, a yellow card so you've got to look at the bench haven't you 61 minutes gone Huddersfield in possession it's Stoke 1 Huddersfield 1 on TalkSport 2 clip down the right hand side it's out of play for a Stoke throw Cambridge have a second against Wigan as they try and get themselves further clear of the drop zone they've got their first winning eight last time out of course Gary Monk the manager at Cambridge these days and Gassan Ahadme has their second of the afternoon and his second as well more to the point Huddersfield winning possession inside the centre circle tucked back by Headley for Kasumu then Healy out to the left hand side for Sorba Thomas Bergsorg making a good run down the left hand side of the area comes in field Delano Bergsorg good strength from him still faced up by defenders at the edge of the area Healy takes over looking for quick feet from him but Stoke win it back and Laurent releases Ryan Mai up on the halfway line Mai has to go back into his own half and looks for his right back Hoover and somehow his forward pass snaked its way through to Josh Laurent but Manhoof can't win the ball for Stoke inside the Huddersfield half and the Terriers have it back Reese Healy on the far left hand touch line looking to win a throw maybe no he's been dispossessed Stoke have it back again but then Rudoni steps in shows good strength to win it off the Stoke captain Josh Laurent and Rudoni has it again down the left hand side of the penalty area trying to play it in between two Stoke defenders but Stoke did enough to get it half clear Bajin Ho lays it off and Manhoof is shoved to the ground and finally plays stop for a Stoke City free kick and the fans love it 63 gone one apiece yeah it was scrappy wasn't it no real real poor play and then obviously uh, as soon as they Stoke got good possession of the ball I've got to say it was a a poor challenge yeah, from uh, Kasumu there He's, he should be receiving a yellow card I wonder what uh, sort of partying Chesterfield have been having just lately because they're now 3-1 down at home to Kidderminster Harriers having won the title Matt Pearson getting the third for Kiddy but Paul Cook's side will be back in the Football League next season also won Salford one in League 2 the league that Chesterfield are rejoining Matty Lund equalises for Salford City here at the bet 365 nearly 20 minutes of the second half gone anybody's game this it's 1-1 Chris Iwellemo but you can see frailties in both sides that could allow other teams to score well that's it it's just about who's who's has that a little bit more uh, again patience a little bit of bravery as well you know too many times the, the play going forward to the numbers as well Bai Jin Ho finds Wouter Berger making a strong run Berger's through the middle tries to poke it past Nichols got stuck in Nichols feet and then he was bailed out by his defender Pearson who put it behind for a corner great run Wouter Berger but he couldn't get the power he wanted behind the shot 1-1 one, one. well he'd done everything right Wouter Berger his first touch was excellent what I don't understand is why he's toe poked the ball he can go with either foot he's just tried to kind of take it early he had no reason to take it early because he'd got in behind the defensive line I think he's just got to come round that and just try and steer it into the either you can give the people the eyes go near post or try and find that bottom left hand corner but there's no reason to, to toe poke it there Haksabanovic going to take the corner kick on the far side at the booth and end for Stoke City lofts it to around the six yard line McNally heads it to the far post back across it might drop it's headed off the line by Rodoni McNally again was in there and Jack Rodoni on the goal line headed away to keep Huddersfield level 
and now Sorba Thomas oh he's pulled back on halfway by Haksabanovic surely that's a yellow card for the substitute indeed it is and it was his corner that caused chaos in the Huddersfield box but Radoni to the rescue for Huddersfield 1-1 well the corner came in I think it was Rose that got, got the first contact. I think McNally kept it alive. Uh, great save from, from Nichols. And then he's down, but he's up again with Doni on the line. Uh, goal line clearance, excellent defending. But again, massive opportunity for Stoke City. Huddersfield's free kick. Thomas swings it up to the edge of the area. Goes beyond Hellick. Pearson brings it down, tries to help it across the area. A bit awkwardly. It's cleared away by Stoke. By Jun Ho chasing after it but he's beaten to it by Alex Matos who gets it back to his goalkeeper Burton 1 Barnsley 2 Barnsley hanging on to a playoff spot they lead John McAtee has his second of the afternoon to turn it around at the Pirelli a throw into Huddersfield Town meantime on this near side to us just to the right of Stephen Schumacher's technical area Kasumu turns away from Manhoff plays it into the feet of Healy could have turned and gone for goal but elected to give it back to Kasumu out to the left hand side Sorba Thomas who's been dangerous all afternoon hits the ball against Herver doesn't go out for a corner he's kept it in play tries to whip it in right footed blocked by Hoover out for a throw on the far side to Huddersfield 1-1 it's an excellent battle isn't it in that left hand side for Huddersfield Sorba Thomas great quality you know he's, 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 he's tried to take Keanu Hoover left right excellent defending followed him all the way got the first block in and again he's just watching the ball all the time excellent defending from Hoover Radoni tries to get to the throw in first Kasumu went down but it was well dispossessed by by Jun Ho then the ball hit the referee and he stops play and he just wants a word with Luke McNally who's just had a bit too much to say for himself and he must be sailing very close to a second yellow card the Stoke City number 23 he's just got to have the experience not to kind of get in the ref's face understand okay I think the referee was allowing it to play on and then called it back when it did then uh, fall into Stoke's favour uh, but you don't get in the referee's face especially when you're on a yellow card and he's just let you off with one massive goal at the bottom Birmingham City 1 Preston North End 0 Jay Stansfield has put Birmingham ahead at St Andrews and Cambridge 2 Wigan 1 Wigan get a goal back at the Abbey Marshall Godo against Cambridge and MK Dons have equalised at Notts County that's now 2-2 two -two in League 2 but here in the Championship we're locked at 1-1 Watford have got a second at West Brom Mieta Rajevic has put Watford further clear that's better from Watford who've been so poor but they've got a good point against Leeds on Friday excellent they will absolute fantastic performance you can see that uh, Tom Cleverley he's tweaked some things there and he's got a reaction the players have really bought into it it's 1-1 here at the bet 365 so Huddersfield back in the bottom three with that Birmingham City goal from Jay Stansfield Harrogate 2, Gillingham 1, Gillingham hanging on to that final playoff place in League 2, have been put behind at Weatherby Road, Matty Daly with Harrogate's second of the afternoon, it's 1-1 here, just gone past the midway point of the second half, anybody's game, you just sense that jeopardy at either end that could go in either Stoke or Huddersfield's favour at any time in this game, it's right on a knife edge for me, Here's Jaheim Headley finding Kasumu for Huddersfield Town. Great work from Bajan Ho to win it back for Stoke. And Manhoof is away down the right-hand side. Skips inside Jaheim Headley. The space for Haksabanovic who picks it up now in the centre of the half. Lays it off for Berger. First time pass to his right for Lawrence. Lawrence spots Hoover on the right-hand side. He delivers the cross just over the head of Mai. Headed up in the air by Pearson. Drops at the edge of the six-yard box. One back by Haksabanovic but only temporarily flicked up to halfway but it won't find Bergsall Stoke have it back and the crowd get involved again it's going to be clip four for Haksabanovic plays a little one-two with Bai Jun Ho then Bai Jun Ho is barged over by Kasumu referee says play on Manhoof on the right hand side the far side of the field from us gives it in play via McNally to Michael Rose on the halfway line it's swung out to this near side now the left and Jordan Thompson now Ryan Moy lovely ball out to Manov in space right hand side of the penalty area plays it in for the run and it's clipped into the goalkeeper's hands good run 
from Kiana Hoover, who was after a second of the afternoon but couldn't quite get the shot past Lee Nichols. But it is a throw. Yeah, moving the ball very well, aren't they? Stoke City controlling the game at the minute, really pushed uh, Huddersfield back. You know, Mammoth and uh, Q, uh, Ken Hoover linking up well. Manhoof down the right hand side of the penalty area, skips past his man, drives it, goal was blocked behind by Hellick for a Stoke corner at the booth and then 1 1. Yeah, excellent for Manhoof, very go out his man, he's in the box, he's manipulating the ball, got round him, just opens the goal a little bit, but. I think it was it Rodoni, was it, that got in with the block there? But it was it, it, Lee Nichols uh, never had to, wasn't asked to save the ball there, but fantastic quality from Manu. So a corner kick for Haksabanovic to strike, where the Boonther there meets the Tar Mountain stand that's opposite our commentary position. Right footed out swinger to come from Haksabanovic. Lots of movement around the penalty spot. Here comes the delivery, looking for the header that's wide from Rose and goes behind for a goal kick. Goals going in elsewhere. Another Liam Kitching own goal. Two own goals and Cardiff lead 2-1 at Coventry in the Championship. Late Norrigan get a goal back against Peterborough. That's 2-1 Ethan Galbraith. Barnsley 3-1 up at Burton now. Luke O'Connell with a third for the Tykes. Crawley 3-0 up at Newport, Lawrence Maguire and QPR lead at Swansea massive goal again at the bottom Steve Cook with the goal for QPR at the Swansea.com stadium Sutton second bottom in League 2 3-0 up on Swindon Harry Smith with the third goals flying in this afternoon and they all mean something that QPR goal, the Birmingham goal does not do Huddersfield or Sheffield Wednesday any favours in their battle to beat the bottom here in the championship as Stoke come forward with Sayad Haksabanovic at 1-1 left hand corner of the area drove in field and tried a shot that deflected off a couple of bodies there were claims for handball there but nothing doing said the referee Huddersfield try and clear and Reese Healy's after a loose ball but great starting position from the goalkeeper Dan Leverson for Stoke to get it out of harm's way Bergsorg for Huddersfield on halfway plays it downfield uh, West Bromwich having get a goal back against Watford West Brom won what for two Brandon Thomas Asante Rotherham lead Millwall they're pretty much doomed Rotherham but they do lead Sebastian Revant against Millwall so here's how it looks at the bottom of the table at the moment Rotherham are bottom they should be on 25 points with that goal they've just got as a couple of changes are being made uh, Ben Wiles is coming on to replace Jaheim Headley and Jack Radoni is coming off as well and Ben Jackson is coming on to replace him so Jackson at the back and Wiles a bit further forward for Huddersfield Town but at the bottom so Rotherham are bottom of the pile but they are on 23 points Sheffield Wednesday 39 Huddersfield 40 Plymouth now occupy fourth bottom 41 Birmingham winning at the moment 42 Millwall losing 44 remember they're losing to Rotherham Millwall Stoke on 45 points which would still therefore be five points clear of the drop zone 73 minutes gone so just over a quarter of an hour to go it is Stoke 1 Sheffield Stoke 1 Huddersfield 1 and here is Jordan Thompson sliding Sayad Haksabanovic in down the Stoke left as they attack the booth and then skips in field past Bergsall, rolls it along the 18 yard line, gets it back Haksabanovic from my gets to the dead ball line and can't pull it back for a teammate and it goes behind for a goal kick and the chance passes for Stoke City and Lee Nichols gets it restarted very quickly to try and find Sorba Thomas but only finds the head of Luke McNally and that's headed out of play for a throw in 1-1 it's an excellent play from Stoke City there you know Haksabanovic seen a lot of the ball a little give and go with Bajon Ho and you know what he, he's just caught between two things does he get the shot away does he pass it across it's a little bit of trickery to try and get it round uh, the oncoming uh, Pearson there but it has to be end product work Nichols or pick someone out Middlesbrough 2 Sheffield Wednesday nil. Isaiah Jones putting Sheffield Wednesday in further trouble up there on Teesside 1-1 one, one here at the bet 365 there's a winner for either of these two teams although Stoke have had the better of it in the last few minutes and they have it again with Bajan Ho good ball rolled in field Vatterberger finds Manhoff offside he was looking along the line 
but not looking hard enough free kick to Huddersfield 1-1 one, one. yeah it was poor from Wurtelberger you know excellent little break as well Mammoth is he's on he shouldn't be offside in fairness but Wurtelberger should know that he's got uh, he's got Loren and Haxavan oh sorry Haxavanovic and Thompson uh, at the other side so he's just got to open up carry on the attack and then commit the defender and release at the right time but he doesn't have to take it first time there free kick for Huddersfield Town then Qu quarter of an hour to go on Talk Sport 2 you're home of the EFL and the ball's going to go out of play for a Huddersfield Town throw you're listening to Stoke 1 Huddersfield 1 in the EFL Championship on Talk Sport 2 with McDonald's order McDelivery on the McDonald's app you get tasty rewards points 18 plus terms and conditions apply Chris Oelamos alongside me Ian Danta here at the Bet365 Chris's old stomping ground and Stoke have just got a slight more advantage in the game they just feel like they're slightly on top here yeah I think they've taken taken control back haven't they does that do you put it down to Huddersfield not really having that energy that they've dropped off well you talked about it before kickoff what have Huddersfield got left in them for this final 14 minutes or so Haksabanovic meantime for Stoke passes it along the halfway line to Berger he works it further across to the right hand side and Laurent slides into the path of Manhoof out on the right wing Jackson looking to close him down little pull back to the edge of the air looking for Bajan Ho it was Herver in there again trying to get involved but it's gone to Huddersfield who clear downfield and Reese Healy won't beat Luke McNally to the ball Plymouth are down to 10 men at home to Bristol City they're already 1-0 down they're now a man down Alfie Devine's had a second yellow card two lemons make a strawberry he's off Huddersfield trying to win possession on the halfway line but it'll drop awkwardly for Ben Jackson but he did well actually and found Michael Hellick who will get out to the left hand touchline drive it downfield and suddenly saw but Thomas was away but again brilliant starting position from the goalkeeper Daniel Everson to get there first and put it out of play for what in the end it's a Stoke City throw at 1-1 well I, I thought he was on sides you know I was waiting for the, the linesman I think uh, Stephen Schumacher now is having a proper go at the fourth and the linesman uh, but it just shows you you know if you're throwing everything at it and bodies uh, forward you're leaving holes in behind you can't do it you know I think uh, Huddersfield are uh, definitely threatening there in behind 1-1 here 13 minutes to go our next commentary is over on Talk Sport that's at 5.30 Ipswich Town taking on Southampton just break off for a moment as Ipswich are coming downfield but it's cleared away by Matty Pearson so let's get the team news for Ipswich against Southampton your match commentator on Talk Sport will be Joe Shannon two changes for Ipswich Burgess and Jackson come in Edmondson and Broadhead drop to the bench three alterations for Southampton Bednarek, Aribo and Fraser all start Walker Peters Smallbone and Suleimana among the subs Ipswich go top of the championship with a victory tonight it's Ipswich against Southampton top man Joe thank you very much Dean Ashton will be alongside Joe Shannon that's on Talk Sport remember so switch over using your Talk Sport app or your digital wireless or whatever to talk sport at about quarter past five and you'll hear full commentary on that game followed in quick succession by full commentary of Leeds United against Hull City at 8pm also on talk sport with Jim Proudfoot and Lucy Ward Ian Danter and Chris Awellamo with you at the Bet365 just over ten minutes to go one apiece between Stoke and Huddersfield at the other end of the championship table from the end that Ipswich and Southampton occupy balls back with Luke McNally inside his own half the two managers at the edge of their technical areas both looking a little nervous looking a little jittery a goal for either side so costly for the opposition lovely run by Sed Haksabanovic drifts up to the edge of the area feeds Ryan Mai in the edge of the D now Bajan Ho left hand side of the box tried the drive and a Brody Spencer flew into a challenge to put it behind for a corner but Millian Manhoff saying I was in acres of space right hand side of the area why didn't you find me 1-1 one, one. yeah it was again great play Haksabanovic driving through really kind of taking his players on and then he releases it to Ryan Mai at the end and edge of the box you know he should just open up or take off one touch and get a shot away release Mammoth Manhoff but uh, yeah he's, I think he's got one th thing in mind there just get control of the ball create that yard and get the shot away and just never presented itself another corner at the booth and then, then for Stoke City at 1-1 it'd be a right footed in swinger from Sead Haksabanovic lots of players in and around the six yard line it's played short to the left hand corner of the box Thompson lofts it in headed out by Helic. 
doing his defensive duties headed up in the end Hellick gets there again at the edge of the box and then Manhoof is dispossessed down the left-hand side by Ben Wiles he's trying to play the ball through the centre for Bergsorg but that's too far ahead of him and Everson again swiftly out to the edge of his area to deal with the danger 1-1 it stays 10 minutes to go now Wouter Berger was under pressure from Bergsorg but there was an offside against Bergsorg coming back from an offside position to win the ball free kick to the hosts I just think when it's as blatant as that the linesman's flag has to go up earlier you know again Wouter Berger is a coming together you, can, you, just, you don't want players getting injured mm. I've got to say Everson there excellent play now as a, as a goalkeeper you have to sweep up at the back but not only just kick it anywhere kept control and kept stoke in possession as well given away by Michael Rose to Sorba Thomas on halfway now Healy working really hard went to ground wants a free kick off Jordan Thompson and says get up nothing wrong with that challenge referee says play on and away comes Millian Manhoff down the right hand side Mai waiting for a cross everybody else in Stoke Red and White is holding back he finds Haksabanovic at the edge of the area clips it down the left hand side of the box by Jun Ho turns away from the dead ball line being watched by Matty Pearson rolls it back to Haksabanovic left hand corner of the area plays the ball into the far post but that's a comfortable catch on the bounce for Lee Nichols in the Huddersfield goal 1-1 nine to play it was just in between you know I thought I thought it's an excellent ball can Keanu Hoover come across he's watching it all he can see it all can he get across the face of Lee Nichols there but the ball just kept on curling towards the goalkeeper and good bravery as well just comes out and claims it very well Lee Nichols 1-1 here 1-1 at the New York Stadium Millwall have equalised at doomed Rotherham Ryan Longman for Millwall Bolton 4 Reading 1 Aaron Collins with Bolton's fourth of the afternoon and the comeback's on for Sunderland Sunderland one Blackburn four Chris Rigg here at the bet 365 it's 1-1 one, one, and finally poised what have either of these two sides got left in the closing eight minutes or so it's Huddersfield in possession with Matos combining with Kasumu in the centre circle now Pearson takes over chips the ball down the right hand side looking for Brody Spencer good header in field from Spencer can't find Reese Healy he was offside anyway and a free kick to Stoke City back it goes to Everson who passed the ball outside of his area almost had it taken off his toe by Delano Bergsorg it's a real risky one that isn't it because it went through I think it went through the legs of a Bergsorg with one foot in the air now Reese Healy in the centre of the Stoke half receives the ball from Matos plays it right to Sorba Thomas Thomas up to the edge of the area great turn Bergsorg fires it right footed and blocked behind by McNally for a corner kick great turn by Delano Bergsorg to buy him the space but the shot was blocked by McNally who's hurt himself in the process 1-1 one, one. well it's excellent defending McNally ha sees the danger gets himself and throws himself at it takes a really slow one there Sorba Thomas into Bergsorg he just rolls his man he just opens it up and he's got the he's got the goal, goal at his mercy but he just doesn't take that shot early enough and uh, McNally gets over across and gets the block in I'm not sure whether that's caught Luke McNally in the unmentionables but um, it's going to be a corner kick all the same to Huddersfield Town in front of their fans in that right hand end at the Caldwell construction end of the ground here at the Bet365 Bet365 Stadium even Sorba Thomas to take the corner kick right footed out swinger deep to the far post Hellick comes off the top of his head Kasumu will try and retrieve it out on that far side for Huddersfield does well knocks it back to Jackson Jackson will drill the ball back up to the edge of the area chested down by Matty Pearson lobs it into the area Wouter Berger gets it clear Ben Wiles goes for goal ambitiously from fully 30 yards out but couldn't keep the ball down it sails over the crossbar for a goal kick 1-1 one, one, just over five to go well why not from Ben Wells there you know it was bouncing nicely for him and it's one of them he's just the technique looked amazing you know he's trying to get a little bit of spin on it but it was always rising Everson was uh, was comfortable in the, the Stoke City goal Everson will cart it downfield the Stoke keeper looking for Mike put back over his head by Brody Spencer straight to Michael Rose Oxford 4 Fleetwood nil big goal for Mark Harris they were just out of the playoffs on goal difference before the start of play Oxford United and they still are because Lincoln are winning as well today 1-1 one, one here forward comes Stoke Jordan Thompson swings a very good cross in from the left hand side Jackson sort of helped it further out the penalty area kept in play by Keanu Hoover down by the corner flag support from Manhoof 
just back down towards the right hand corner of the penalty area infield it goes to Walter Berger Berger fires it into the box and it's away from my and it's saved by Lee Nichols who bowls it out underarm to Brody Spencer as Huddersfield try and build again from the back so I don't think that's a bad ball from Walter Berger I just think my thought it was for uh, Jun Ho that's running in behind now Ben Wiles fires it forward to Reese Healy just deflected away from him but Bergsall will get into the loose ball for Huddersfield the Terriers still believe that they can win this game infield it goes to Brody Spencer tries to whip across him blocked by Berger Spencer gets it back again and rolls it back to Sorba Thomas Thomas rolls it down the right hand side too much on that for Matos to catch up with and it's gone behind for a Stoke goal kick four minutes of normal time to go on Talk Sport 2 Stoke 1 Huddersfield 1 he's not had many of them today Sorba Thomas I think he's been excellent you know I think his distribution he's, he's he gets on the ball no matter where he is in the pitch and he drives at players he, he, he makes decisions you know I think his quality on the ball has been, been outstanding that one let him down there but uh, I'll let him off with that Ender Stevens is going to get a few minutes to replace Wouter Berger at the end of this game Stevens started the last game up at Hull City on Good Friday just to bolster the defensive lines I think for Stoke City Sunderland won Blackburn 5 so the Sunderland comeback didn't last very long Andy Moran up from the back to score the fifth for Blackburn and that will definitely be a first three-point haul as Blackburn manager for John Eustace Notts County 2 MK Dons 3 Ellis Harrison looks to have won it for MK at Meadow Lane here come Huddersfield at 1-1 Delano Bergs all right hand side of the area oh he's got past McNally can he pull it back to a teammate went for goal himself and it was blocked behind for a corner kick and Stoke players are adamant that there was a foul on Luke McNally by Bergsorg. Simpson, the referee, said no. It ends up being a corner, 1-1. Yeah, Simpson spot on, the referee. I think uh, there was no... McNally just overcommitted. Uh, Bergsorg just kind of allowed him to get in between the ball. He's lost his footing and then Bergsorg, for me, the wrong decision. I don't understand why he's going for goal. Healy's there. And Tried then to nutmeg the keeper, didn't he? It's, poor. it's a poor decision, isn't it? It is a corner, though, to Huddersfield at that right-hand end. Sorba Thomas again with the delivery. Headed out to the edge of the box by Ender Stevens comes out to Jackson Jackson with a right footed ball looking again for Sorba Thomas right hand side of the area hooks it back into the Stoke box only half cleared one back brilliantly by Brody Spencer Thomas again with a cross this time it's blocked by Hak Sabanovic Huddersfield trying to turn the screw here two minutes to go 1-1 one, one. ball up to halfway for Stoke doesn't find a target Hak Sabanovic will now clear to halfway but that's straight down the throat of Matos up goes Matty Pearson to try and win the flick on. Stevens got the better of him. Head tennis now around the centre circle. Doesn't break for Stoke. And then a poor pass from Batos trying to get it out to the right-hand side for Thomas means Stoke have a throw. Rotherham back in front late on against Millwall. 2-1 they lead. Charlie White has the goal for Rotherham. That will give them a rare three points as they look set to drop back into League One for next season. Now Bergsall for Huddersfield Town wins it back. Right hand side, slips it down the right hand side of the box. Brody Spencer to the dead ball line, wins a corner off Ender Stevens. And they're really working hard at the end of this game, Huddersfield Town, to try and get the three points themselves. 1 1. Yeah, working very hard without the ball, Ian, you know, forcing the error. I think Stoke, too many touches, you know, sometimes just put it down the channel with a little bit of quality well, I don't think we could, we could accuse Stockpool uh, uh, we could accuse Huddersfield of being leggy this afternoon no like definitely they were not second half against yeah. West Brom they're, they're finishing the stronger aren't they and they have a corner at Huddersfield Town Thomas to take it right footed deep to the far post nodded down by Pearson blocked away by Stoke but again there's nobody in red and white on halfway so Jackson can retrieve Kasumu left hand side right footed ball into the box just gone behind Matty Pearson this time and Haksabanovic will pick up the loose ball for Stoke in his own defensive third and tuck it back for Ender Stevens who clears left footed but straight onto the head of Matos brought down by the chest of Zorba Thomas who fires a ball across looking for Bergsorg great intended pass and he almost found his man and Bergsorg will get there in the end was he pushed over? no says the referee Stoke can try and break Heading towards added time. 1-1, one, one. here comes Stoke City with Josh Lauren. Playing the ball into Baijin Ho at the edge of the area. Back to goal, turns, slips inside. Haksabanovic tries to lob the keeper and it's over the bar. And it's a goal kick. 
and we're into four minutes of minimum stoppage time as it stays 1-1 on TalkSport 2. It's an excellent break, isn't it? Fantastic break from Stoke, you know, Josh Loren just driving all the way, they release it to, to by John Ho. I've got to say, I think he done everything right. Haksabanovic for me has to take it to the take it to the line, create the space, and then try and cut it back to find someone there because they had a proper goal. Josh Loren had a proper goal to Haksabanovic there because he's just think one thing in mind: just can he get the shot away? And it was wrong decision. So one-one, we're into that four minutes of minimum added time here at the Bet365 Stadium. Can we get a winner here? Stoke had the ball on halfway. Ryan Mai, great ball, almost picked out Manhood, but actually that's really well intercepted at the back by Ben Jackson for Huddersfield. Now he's making strides down the Terrier's left-hand side. Plays it ball infield to Kasumu. Stockport lead Wimbledon in League Two. Odin Bailey makes it 1-0 to the Hatters. Sorba Thomas swings the cross in, deflecting behind by Michael Rose for a late Huddersfield corner. 1-1, and the Terriers asking the questions again. Well, again, Michael Rose had to make a contact. The ball from Sorba Thomas, excellent. Just in behind uh, the last defender and, and goalkeeper there. Uh, but yeah, timely, timely challenge. Morecambe 2, Barrow 1, Ben Whitfield gets one back for Barrow, maybe too late, Lincoln 3-1 up at Carlisle, Cheltenham behind at home to Exeter, who've scored in the 90th minute through Rhys Cole, late goals going in to affect matters at the top and bottom of League 1 and 2, here in the Championship, in added time, 1-1, between Stoke and Huddersfield, Huddersfield corner, taken by Thomas to the far post, Hellick gets his head in it, up in the air, it's going to land beyond the roof of the net and behind for a goal kick and Stoke will want to get on with it because they want to win this game just as much as Huddersfield do, 1-1. One, one. Yeah, not a bad ball again from Sobba Thomas and Hellick, the danger man, it wasn't a free header, he was under under pressure all the while, he'd be disappointed that he's, he's not just steered that goalwards there, couldn't, couldn't, get, uh, couldn't go over it. Everson's goal kick. Down goes Mai, who actually fouled Hellick and has given Huddersfield a free kick inside their own half. And Lee Nichols is going to take it and he's ushering all the Huddersfield defenders forward. And all the Huddersfield fans are going, come on, everyone come this way towards us. We want you all up here for this free kick. They want the three points, the travelling support away to our right-hand side. Nearly three minutes of the minimum four have been played out. Here's the free kick from Lee Nichols, looking for Hellick, an obvious target. Flicked on by Healy, kept in play by Sorba Thomas, down by the corner flag. And he hits the ball against Ender Stevenson, winter throw in, not a corner on this near side. Still a chance for Huddersfield to get one last big opportunity. And Reese Healy looks like he's ready to hurl a long throw into the box, drying the ball on his jersey. West Brom equalise against Watford, Darnell Furlong makes it 2-2 at the Hawthorns, here comes the long throw from Reese Healy, claimed though by Everson inside his six yard box and then he fires the ball downfield but Pearson has stayed down, he caught the head of Matty Pearson in winning that catch, Daniel Everson and Pearson's holding the back of his head and we can't play on just yet 1-1. One, one. Well, it's good strong goalkeeping from Everson there, came out, I've got to say I was surprised with the, the Healy throw it was, it was right on the money but you want your, your, your goalkeeper to be dominant there came out, good hands and took, uh, took him out, didn't he? Well, Pearson's back on his feet, doesn't need any treatment. The ball's been rolled into the empty net, <laughs> that end by Delano Bergsorg, which raised a bit of a cheer from the Huddersfield fans. But it seems, with the four minutes having been played, it's now down to the referee how much more we play on. We're destined for a share of the spoils here between Stoke City and Huddersfield Town. Long ball downfield, going to be flicked on towards halfway. Ryan Mai trying to get a piece of it. It's just hoofed downfield by Keanu Hoover straight into the arms of Lee Nichols. Nichols will clear, right-footed, downfield. Is it kept in play by Healy? Can't keep it in play on this near side. And there goes the full-time whistle. It's honours even between Stoke and Huddersfield. Huddersfield will remain in the championships bottom three but it is an important point for Andre Brighton writer in this game where they did have the lead against Stoke City they led through a brilliant first goal for the club by their striker Bojan Radulovic just before half time brilliant drop of the shoulder inside the box and a very very good finish indeed 
to see Huddersfield ahead at the break but within five minutes of the restart Stoke were level Kiana Hoover with an equally brilliant goal his third of the season a fantastic left-footed effort from just inside the right-hand side of the box one of the best goals they'll have seen here at the bet 365 this season and let's face it they haven't seen many goals at this stadium well, what's the overall feeling do you think Chris Willemo with the fact that it's on as even here yeah I think it's a fair result I've never seen an, uh, enough quality from both sides to, to, to warrant the win no, they had opportunities but yeah it was they're competitive I think there'll be positives for both managers uh, to take albeit I think other results have went against uh, Brighton Raiders uh, Huddersfield side but you know what like, was it still five points in it from Stoke you're looking at it from a Stephen Schumacher point of view so you don't lose the game that's it you know I think you've put another point on the board and you take the positives out of it but I've got to say I think uh, showed far too much respect after the start that Stoke City had the basically conceded possession they allowed Huddersfield to, to dictate the tempo of the game and rightfully went behind but what I did see was with good character uh, and Stoke City came out that second half and controlled most of it they looked like the team that were going to go on and, uh, and, and get the victory at the end and two great goals we've seen this afternoon outstanding Chris. finishes wasn't it I think Rudulovic opened his account great little bit of trickery in the 18 yard box you know got away from uh, I think it was Rose wasn't it and then just puts it into the top right hand corner and then Keanu who we've seen him do it time and time again you know I think he's, 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 he came from nowhere he just opened it up on his uh, take it out to his left and he just put it right into the top left hand corner left Lee Nichols with no chance whatsoever it was an outstanding finish well looking elsewhere around the championship Birmingham have beaten Preston by a goal to nil Middlesbrough have beaten Sheffield Wednesday by two goals to nil Plymouth have lost at home to Bristol City by a goal to nil. Rotherham, they're still leading against Millwall, even though they're doomed. They're 2-1 up. 1-1 here between Stoke and Huddersfield. QPR are still in front late on at Swansea. So what it means, Chris and Willemo, if we look at the bottom of the championship, just to round things off, Rotherham bottom on 23, Sheffield Wednesday 39, Huddersfield 40, Plymouth 41, Birmingham 42, Millwall 44, and Stoke and Blackburn both 45. Everybody has now got six games to go. What do you make of it? Oh, it's, this is what it's all about, isn't it? This is why we love the championship. You know, and they're still, uh, you're looking at it, I think, uh, from a Huddersfield point of view, the, 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 the players are still within, the, the teams are still within touching distance that they can go. Uh, go on a nice little run put a win on the board you just never know it's, it's down there's, there's poor teams here but your Birmingham have got a big big win today that's a fantastic result well that means the UB40 gig that's been planned for <laughs> after full time won't be quite as eggy as it would have been if they got beaten today but yes that's a big win and a big goal for young Jay Stansfield Sheffield Wednesday going down 2-0 at Middlesbrough Plymouth I think I would be concerned if I was a Plymouth supporter because that since obviously they lost their manager they brought in Ian Foster their falls completely just, just evaporated on them and yeah. they lose again today and lose a man yeah it's, it's important you know especially if you're losing a, an important figure as well with the red card and suspension but uh, Foster you know he's, he's come in he's got a brand of football but it's all about just getting results just now taking a game at a time rather than trying to implement too much of a style or tweaking too much well Chris thank you very much Pleasure. as always for your input this afternoon the live football will continue from the championship over on Talk Sport. Remember, Adrian Derren is about to give you a full classified check of this afternoon's results on Talk Sport. And then it's off to Portman Road for Ipswich Town against Southampton. Joe Shannon and Dean Ashton, your commentators there in Suffolk. And as soon as that's done on Talk Sport, we will then head for Ellen Road. Leeds United will take on Hull City, <coughs> excuse me, at 8 pm. Jim Proudfoot and Lucy Ward, your commentary team for that game coming up next here on Talk Sport 2 it's the women's football show with Leanne Sanderson and her former Arsenal teammate Jilly Flaherty but the full time score here at the Bet365 in the championship on your home of the EFL Talk Sport 2 was Stoke City 1 Huddersfield Town 1 Slides into the box Radulovic looking to make room scores brilliantly oh what a goal what a time to open your account for your new club. 
Bojan Radulovic. A touch from Kiana Hoover brings it into the box. Left footed effort. What a goal! Kiana Hoover! No chance whatsoever. What a finish. It's all square. 1 1. EFL Live on TalkSport 2 with McDonald's. Fancy a Big Mac for the big match? Order McDelivery now on the McDonald's app and get tasty reward points delivered too. 18 plus. Rewards account required. Participating restaurants. Subject to availability. Delivery fees and terms apply. At Morrison's, get any four for £5 from over 30 frozen products. From bird's eye garden peas, potato waffles, Goodfellas pizzas, plus many more. That's more easy peasy teas sorted. Morrison's to shop at Morrison's. Majority of stores and online subject to availability. Selected lines ends 14th of April. The following are assembly instructions for a day trip at IKEA this Easter. Take eight plump meatballs at least and one bed that doubles as a bouncy castle. Add free 45 minutes room planning sessions. As many activities for kids as possible. And add one extra slice of dime cake. Combine all together and you have the perfect day out at IKEA. IKEA, the wonderful everyday. This spring, Plusnet are buzzing to tell you about full fibre. Oh, it's a bee. Our latest and four fastest broadband. With speeds up to 900 megabytes and absolutely no activation fees. That's a plus. Offer ends 3rd of April. Save time and make a beeline straight to Plusnet for our best price. New customers only, 24-month contract, limited availability, terms apply. If you leave your customers happier than Larry. If you always take your boots off at the door. If you tend to get given the good biscuits, you might have what it takes to join the Trust the Trader professionals. Millions of people use trustatrader.com to find reputable, recommended tradespeople like you. So if you're looking for more business and even more good biscuits, apply to join us at McDonald's winning sips is back with millions of prizes up for grabs again like Coke glasses, Mackey's merch, festival tickets or even one of our weekly 10 grand cash prizes. Great winning sips now on medium or large soft drinks. Promotional drinks only, end 16th of April. App registration may be required. 18 plus, UK only, terms apply. TalkSport 2, official broadcast partner of the Premier League and the English Football League. On DAB Plus, online, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. The Women's Football Show with Leanne Sanderson. Absolutely first class on TalkSport 2. This is Talk Sport Women's Football Show. Coming up on today's show, we have all the talk and reaction from the action packed Monty Cup final between Arsenal and Chelsea yesterday. We'll hear from Southampton boss Marianne Spacey and how life is going in the Championship. And I'm delighted to say that my former teammate, Arsenal, Chelsea, and England defender Jilly Flaherty will be with me to dissect all the WSL games and more. This is Talk Sports Women's Football Show. Hi, it's Katie McCabe and you're listening to the Women's Football Show on TalkSport 2. Hello, hello. Happy New Week, everybody. Now, I say this every single week because I do get some really amazing people on my show, but I'm delighted to say that this week I'm joined by Arsenal, Chelsea, West Ham, Liverpool, England legend, Gillian Flaherty. Gilly, how are you? I'm good, thank you, Lee. How are you? I'm doing well, mate. You know what, right? I always say this, I always love to get people on a show that I'm friends with and that I've got a good relationship with and we bumped into each other recently at Stamford Bridge. And what I love about you and I is when we see each other, that's why I want to get on my show. Honesty, lovely conversation. Sometimes our conversations may be too much for people to handle. So it's good that it's between <laughs> you and I. But how are you doing? I know obviously, I know your dad very well that passed away, unfortunately. And I know you struggled with that. So how are you feeling and how are you doing in retirement life? Yeah, I mean, it, it's going well. I mean, I think, um, obviously, in December, we come up to Dad's one year. So, I think it's January, February, um, and probably in March, I was g- gone for a little bit of a tough time, to be honest with you. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm loving being retired. I'm, I'm working in a primary school three days a week, going back to what I, I already knew before turning pro. Um, and then, yeah, doing a bit of, obviously, the commentary work as well. So I'm still getting my football fixed, but I'm also getting a bit of a normal life as well. So, yeah, I'm lucky. 
Yeah, I know. I mean, I get asked this question all the time. Do I miss playing? And I'm just like, absolutely not. But what I will say is that when I'm in America, because I'm over here working at the moment, I do see the pitch and I'm a little bit like, oh, like when I'm in England and it's freezing cold, you know, I'm like, no, nah, <laughs> yeah. no thanks. When I'm here, I'm thinking I get nostalgic. You know, is there ever a moment where you think, uh, you know, because you retired pretty early, right? You were quite young. Yeah, when I, was you about it. yeah I was only, what, 30, 31 when I retired. Um, and I, listen, I think if Dad hadn't passed away, then I wouldn't have been retiring as, as early as I did. But... It, yeah, there are t- times when I'm commentating on the game, I'm thinking, oh, why is she doing this? Why is she doing that? Like, I feel like I'll just get the kit back on and play. Um, but yeah, then I obviously get the other side of it, where if I, I want to take a weekend off and do stuff with family, I could take a weekend off, which, you know, my mum always says to me, go into coaching, go into that. And I'm like, no, I, can't, I don't want to, mum, because it's just, I like my balance that I've got at the moment and I don't want that to change. Yeah, do you think there's this pressure when you retire? Because obviously you're still doing your punditry work and you're brilliant and I love your honesty because we're kind of cut from the same cloth. But do you think there's this pressure when people retire to kind of go into commentary or coaching and kind of stay within the game? And then when people kind of disappear, people are like, what happened to them? Why did they not stay in the game? But they just might not want to. Yeah, I, I even say that now about former players. I'm like, where is this player gone? Like, she's just got an A1 or something. Like, no one knows where she is. And yeah, no, I completely agree. I think for me, I, when I retired, obviously, I didn't want to... I could have re- realistically took six months off, really, when I finished. But I always see it as, one, I, I need to work. I need to be busy. I, I'm, I'm that sort of person. And two, I didn't want to give... I, I wanted to get six months on someone else who potentially was going to retire because we know what it's like in, in this industry. Um, so I just wanted to get straight into it. And obviously with the, the punditry and commentary, you, you're going in basically at, at ground level again. You've got to learn everything that you, you didn't know before. So, yeah, I've just been trying to be like a sponge, really, and just soak up as much information and learn as much about this business as well. So... It's good. I'm enjoying it. Lovely. So I think as well, I want to talk about your successful career, you know. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think, you know, minimal England caps, nine, right? And I always felt like you should have had way more, you know. Would you say that was a fair assessment? And do you look back on anything now in your career and you think, you know, what? why do you think you didn't get as many caps? As I don't think I'm the only one that would feel that way, you know, because we played together. I played against you a number of times and, you know, you've had an amazing career, successful. You don't spend, you know, seven, eight years at Arsenal and these top teams, captain in these teams, if you're not good enough. But I always felt like you never really got the opportunity you deserved. Did you feel that way? Yeah. And, and in all honesty, Lee, I think when I when I made my debut against China, and I, I think I might have been, what, I think about 26, 27 then, I, I never thought in my life I'd get an England senior cap. So for me, playing in that game, I was like, I don't care if I never play for England again because I've got something that I never thought I'd ever have. And yeah, I do. Hold on, hold on. I want to I want to stop you there for a second because you're 26, 27 when you got your first cap, right? And I know you're coming from a humble place where you're like, you know, I never imagined I'd play for England, but that's still pretty late. And you were always knocking on the door. How old were you in your quadru- quadruple team, like 16? Like 15, yeah, 15, exactly. 16. You know, and it's taken 11 years for that situation to happen. So I love how humble you are, but I still think it came too late. <laughs> yeah, I, no, I, and I and I represented England obviously at all the young, younger age groups and played as well. Like I got so many caps for the for the youth teams, but yeah, I don't know whether it potentially be my face didn't fit in the senior team or certain managers just weren't really keen on me. But I've always been a player where I'm like, uh, as long as I'm doing the business for my club, that's all that mattered to me. And if I got England, I got England. If I didn't, I didn't. So for me, yeah, to have nine caps and I thought I never would have one, yeah, I was happy with that. And obviously, look back on your, looking back on your career, seven years at Arsenal, four at Chelsea, four at West Ham, ending your career at Liverpool, you know, what, what do you think gets the best out of Gilly? You know, management-wise, because we talk a lot on this show about coaches and communication and how some of this not open and honest and they feed you lip service and all those types of things. But what are the best managers you played under and why? Do you know, all, all I've ever wanted from a manager is honesty. Honesty and to feel valued at a club. And I feel like every time I've left the club, it's because that value has gone. And that's what, and I, I'm, I'm so much like that, Lee. Where I'm like, I will give everything, and I'll, if, if, a, if I feel a manager values me and wants me and, and loves me, I'll go to war for you. Do you know what I mean? And I just feel like every club that I've been at, it got to the point where, oh, it's just Jilly. You know, Jilly's not going to go nowhere. Jilly's going to stay, and um, that's why I moved on. But for me, yeah, one of the best managers I've ever ever played under for that is Matt Bid. You know, he, he, he knows when to put an arm around you. He knows, especially towards me, he can go. Listen, that's not good enough. I need more from you. But he just got the best out of me. And then, and that's why I say it's fitting, really, that I ended my career playing again for him. Because, in all honesty, I wouldn't have wanted to retire underneath anyone else. 
Yeah, and obviously a lot of managers do see your value, and I agree with you about Beardy. I mean, I love that about him. He's open and honest, and you, that's all you ask for. You've been a captain of teams, so obviously there's a lot of managers that do value you. Do you like that responsibility? And how much does that change you on the field of play when you're captain compared to when you're not? Um, yeah, no, I mean, I, I love being captain. I've had a bit of a, an, an experience with the captaincy in regards to, like, obviously at Chelsea, I was vice-captain. and Obviously at Arsenal, I was vice-captain at, at points. And I always felt like I was good enough to be vice, but never to be the captain. And then it was only when really going to West Ham where Billy said, listen, I want you to make you my captain. It was the first time, really, that I felt like someone's fully trusted me with this role. And whether I had the armband or not, I was no different. I was still loud on the pitch. I still organise and communicate. But it was, as a captain, you, and, and in all honesty, a captain you don't realise, until you go to a team like West Ham, who we had a lot of adversity, you know, we was fighting relegation. That's when really the, I learned how to be a captain. You know, difficult conversations with the team, difficult conversations with the media. There was trouble going on, on and off the pitch, which I had to basically handle. And I did bring a lot home. Like, I was like stressed out as anything put home, but... Yeah, I learned so much from just being given that the opportunity to have that role. And obviously, the women's game now, you know, you, you and I are both still in it, and I feel really blessed to be working within the game, you know, and doing the men's game as well. What's your assessment of the WSL and the championship? Because I think, you know, I often give a lot of credit to our former club, Arsenal, because obviously they're flying in with regards to attendances and setting out stadiums. But sometimes I think it's not a true reflection of how the league is. So when you look at the other attendances for Manchester United around Lee Valley and at Man City, I still think there's a lot of work to be done. What would you say your assessment is, you know, of the women's game right now? Yeah, I mean, I completely agree with that. And I think it's great that you have the top three, in all fairness, selling out their stadiums and, and, and attracting consistent fans. Um, but it needs to be replicated the whole way down. For me, I think the, the, the league needs to be expanded. I think more clubs need to come into it. I feel like we've had 12 clubs for as long as this existed. Do you know what I mean? And now I think it's the time. I don't think in the championship it should just be one team up and I don't believe it should be one team down either because there's a lot of teams and clubs who have been got away with relegation when really, in regards to not just on the pitch, off the pitch, the things that they've got away with and the standards that they're, they're at the club, they've been fortunate. There's always been really one bad team really in the league and it saved them. Do you know what I mean? So that's that's one thing I think that definitely needs to to needs to improve, and hopefully it'll grow. Obviously, with the especially with the new owners coming in too. But yeah, I think it's just replicating, not just having it the top two or three doing it, but the whole league doing it. That's a great point, and we're going to come back to that conversation a little bit later when I marry Anne Spacey on. That's obviously with Southampton in the Championship. This is the Women's Football Show on TalkSport 2. I'm Leanne Sardison. Gilly Flaherty is with me. Coming up next, we'll take a look back on that Conti Cup final and Chelsea's quadruple hopes coming to an end. TalkSport 2, official broadcast partner of the Premier League. TalkSport 2 with William Hill. Get epic value all season with William Hill. 18 plus, be gambleaware.org. Imagine a place where you can escape for a day. Get immersed in a world of rooms, inspiration and expertise, where you can laze in luxury accommodation. And kids can feast from 95 pence. Tickets are free to everyone this Easter and include all the attractions. You've just imagined a day out at IKEA. IKEA, the wonderful everyday. Expect a bigger Easter with Tesco. Get 25% off six or more bottles of wine and fizz with your Tesco club. That move, that feeling. It could only have happened here. Following the footsteps of legends on a tour of Wembley Stadium with exclusive access to the dressing rooms, press room and even the Royal Box. Plus, experience the journey made by the world's biggest names in football through the Players' Tunnel and onto England's most iconic sporting stage. Wembley's award-winning stadium tour. Kicks off every morning from 10. Book now at wembleystadium.com slash tours. It matters more at Wembley. Let me go straight to the point. When you're laying a patio or driveway, you need Seeker Fast Fix. It's ready mixed, easy to use and quick to apply. Plus, it comes in five colours and you can use it in any weather. Transform your next project with confidence. Transform it with Seeker Fast Fix. Ah... <sighs> 
and you'll finish a quality job in no time at all. Seeker Stockist now at seeker.co.uk slash landscaping. Why do I race for life? For my very own bowel babe, who calls rain liquid sunshine, whose presence is like one big hug. A treasure hunter in the charity shops and a fighter through her treatment. She believed in me before I believed in myself. That's my sister from another mister. Her name is Viv, and I'm racing for her. No matter how cancer affects us, life is worth racing for. Sign up to your local event at raceforlife.org by the 29th of April to get 30% off entry. In partnership with headline sponsor, Standard Life. 90 seconds and you're done. Yes, just 90 seconds. That's how long it takes to shave your head with the Pitbull from Skull Shaver. Shave your head, face or body, wet or dry. You're only seconds away from a super smooth shave. That's the power of Pitbull. Skull Shaver products have over 100,000 five-star reviews worldwide and 30 days money-back guarantee. 90 seconds and you're done. Try the Pitbull from SkullShaver.co.uk. Skull Shaver, the time saver. If you embrace innovation and believe technology can be magic, let's make it real. Introducing the new all-electric BMW iX2 with its connected technology and a sweeping curved display that lets you stream movies and play video games whilst parked up. Search BMW iX2 to book a test drive. Non-conformists, please form a disorderly queue. Features require a BMW digital premium subscription. App costs may apply. Details on our website. Test drive subject to status and availability. This is Talk Sports Women's Football Show. Don't forget the TalkSport Network is the place to be for all things women's football. We have reporters at WSL matches throughout the season and we're the home of the Lionesses with live commentary from all of England's home games. That means that we bring you England's Euro qualifier against Sweden live on TalkSport 2 this Friday from 7.30pm. Thanks for being with us. I'm Leanne Sarneson and Gilly Flaherty is with me. A huge Conti Cup final played out at Molyneux Stadium yesterday as Arsenal and Chelsea both hoped to pick up their first trophy of the season. Here's how it sounded on TalkSport with our commentary team, Joe Shannon and Courtney Sweetman-Kirk. And the 13th Women's League Cup final is off and underway. Only as far as James on the edge of the box, though. She took it in a stride brilliantly. Shoots right-footed and it's beaten away by the goalkeeper Zinsberger. Header away by woman Moy for Arsenal. Only as far as Ramirez. Edge of the D-low shot. It's in! Ramirez for Chelsea! We're looking now at the, the replays that we've got here in the the press box and I think there's a handball leading up to it and VAR is checking it and indeed the referee Cheryl Foster has been sent straight away to the pitch side monitor and decides to rule the goal out credit where credit's due VAR they dealt with it quickly it's come out to McCabe 30 yards out rising drive tipped over the top by Hampton record crowd for a League Cup final 21,462 at Molyneux. Distinct over the top by Wrighton. Lauren James, great first touch. James is clear, in on goal, saved by Zinsberger. And that is the end of normal time. Plus added time, so extra time to come. Ford lays it square. Black Stenius, can she put it in? She has! Arsenal may have won it! Well, they've hoofed and they've puffed Arsenal and they've finally got past Hannah Hampton. The final whistle blows! It's League Cup victory for Arsenal again! The first silverware of the campaign is going back to North London as the League Cup is hoisted high into the air. No quadruple for Chelsea. Arsenal are the League Cup winners for 2024. Firstly at TalkSport, we want to send our best wishes to Frieda Mornum, who went down off an inoffable incident at the end of normal time. We're wishing her a very speedy recovery and we're glad to hear she's in a stable condition. So, Jill, obviously you and I saw the game yesterday and, you know, it's not something you want to see within any game. But when Freedom Morning went down, you know, when that happens, has it ever happened to you as, when you've been a teammate? And what's the reaction, do you think, from the players? Because I think Arsenal is probably in Chelsea's head as well as the game continued to go on. Yeah, and I think, listen, in this day and age, obviously, we don't see this really in the women's game. We see it. It's, it's been more frequent in the men's game. Um, so, obviously, yeah, I think, obviously, watching it at home, it was just, it's awful because you don't know what's going on. You could tell, I think, as well, how quiet it was in the stadium. Um, and I think even players having to witness that, you know, and then obviously try and go on as well. Not just necessarily Arsenal, but Chelsea players having to see it too. But I think it was a great response from both medical teams um, to, to jump straight in and, and help her and 
she travelled back as well, I think, with the team. She didn't have to go to hospital, which is positive news too. But, yeah, unfortunate enough, I've never really had to witness, even a player getting knocked out, really. I think I've only ever seen Katie Chapman once um, in training <laughs> pass out after she'd headbutted someone. But that was it. So, yeah, I'm, I'm quite fortunate in that sense. Yeah, and obviously, did you think Arsenal were worthy winners in the I mean, it went down to the wire. It was certainly getting spicy down on that sideline with Emma, Emma Hayes and Jonas Eidevelt. You know, do you think Arsenal were the worthy winners in the end? I was surprised it actually went into extra time. Yeah, I, do you know what I said, Lee, as well? Yesterday, I said that, that all the games they've played each other this year have all been so different. Like, these, you're, you're talking, obviously, the one at the Emirates when Chelsea got battered, the one at Stamford Bridge where Arsenal got battered. And I just felt this was probably the one of the most boring ones out of, out of all the times they've played against each other. But I think there's a lot of pressure on both of them wanting to take the trophy. You know, Arsenal know that that's the only thing that they could win this year. Chelsea are obviously fighting for the quadruple. So there's a lot of that. And it seemed like both teams were just trying to be a little bit more cautious with it. But I'd say overall, yeah, I think Arsenal were the deserved winners. And yeah, it's it spicy and that's what we want. Yeah, it is definitely. I love to see that type of stuff. What do you think this means for Jonas Eideval? Because obviously I think, obviously he signed a new contract last year. I feel like when he, when people are starting to question if he if he's the right guy for the club, he then seems to deliver. He did it last year in the Conti Cup. But what do you make of, you know, his position right now? And surely that must help you know, his case to kind of stay on as manager, winning the Conti Cup a little bit. Yeah, I think, listen, we both know what it's like to be at Arsenal. We both know the expectations from fans and the club is that you have to win, you know, and I think Arsenal have got away for too many years not winning, you know, not bringing home silverware. And I think, they, they I think for me, though, with Arsenal, they don't necessarily want to be just seen as cup specialists, obviously FA Cup, Conti Cup. For them, they want to get the WSL. They want to bring that home because, in my eyes, that shows the most consistent team throughout the whole year. Um, but, yeah, I think it's, it's saved his bacon a little bit, bringing that home. Um, and then hopefully... But I think, feel like with Arsenal fans, though, they obviously get frustrated because if, for the last couple of years, they've always been in it with a title and then they just sort of get to a point where they just completely drop off. So I think the pressure will be on him next year to deliver the WSL. Yeah, and TalkSport's very own Abigail Davis spoke to Arsenal manager after the game, Jonas Eidevel and striker Alessia Russo to get their reaction and thoughts on that final. Very proud of the team and, and the staff group. I think it's an excellent performance from us. It's obviously a very, very hard-fought game with small details in the end, but we, we do everything we can to be on the right side of those margins and um, we get the reward. And important to discuss Frida Marnham. How is she? What's the update on her? That is very important. Um, of course, we get um, you get afraid when you see pictures like that. Uh, immediately after I asked about it, she she should be fine. Uh, there should not be be uh, be anything wrong. Um, so so that but I haven't seen her yet. And it shows great mental strength from the players that were out on the pitch to carry on and make sure they got the job done, especially having just been through those difficult circumstances. Yeah, I think something we learned from the last time we played Chelsea here in the league was to say, like, how do we go as a team under stressed situations and still being able to be high performing and connecting and communicating? And we were not happy with the way we conducted ourselves there. Now you could obviously see the contrast picture of that. Uh, we're a really high performing team, we have a high performing environment. Uh, so. We can handle a lot of external um, situations and that's very, very nice to see. And just finally, I have to ask about that altercation with Emma at the end. What was that about? What brought that on and how surprised were you by it? Yeah, I, it's like, I, I don't think that was a, was a big thing. I just think it was an argument in the heat of it. If we were playing with one or, or multi balls in the, in the competition, it's, it's nothing I think about. Uh, for it like that, it's just heat of the moment. There's nothing better than winning a trophy as a team um, and celebrating with the fans. So um, yeah, it was a tough game today, but really pleased. And for you personally, you entered the pitch in really difficult circumstances. How did you, as a group, get over what you'd just seen happen to Frida? Yeah, it's tough. Um, Frida's a great player, a great person, love having her around. And yeah, these things happen in football and it's really sad, but she's got the best people looking after her. And yeah, I'm not, I'm not actually seen her yet, but um, yeah, here she's doing okay, so that's good. Um, 
yeah, it's not nice, um, but she's in the best hands and we'll look after her. Absolutely, and Pastina to get the winner as well, given the season that she's had, that was a really big moment as well, especially given how many chances there had been and the clinical edge that was lacking in the match. Yeah, for sure. I think it was nice as well. Stina's Frida's best mate as well, so that was nice too. Um, but yeah, she's had an incredible tournament this this run, um, and yeah, it was yeah almost written in the stars for her. So um, yeah, it was great, and maybe we should have taken them earlier, but it doesn't matter. We've won the trophy now, and that's all that matters. Now, Jill, a player that I like as a person, and I like as a player, Alessia Russo. Talk to me about your thoughts on this. I know Black Stinia has got the goal, they've got the goal, obviously. But I just can't get my head around the fact that why Alessia is not getting the rub of the green at Arsenal. Like, why would you bring a player in for that much money, you know, from Manchester United and not really give her the game time? You know, I mean, I'm not saying it gives you a divine right to play. We've been on teams where players are coming for a lot of money and they end up playing and they might not be performing. But with Alessia, I just see a player that just needs to play. She's not playing. Yeah, no, yeah, I agree with you. And I think as well, it's about working hard to get the best out of Alessia. You know, I think for me, I'm, I'm not too keen on the um, Freedom Ornament and Alessia combination. I don't really think that works. I think it might be fair if you potentially push Kim Little higher up to link with her. Because I think you're looking at Alessia with, with Ella Toon at Man United. It was all them slip balls through the defence that Alessia feeds off of. And I think sometimes when she comes so deep for the ball, you know, like holding the ball up, you don't have them third player runs to go past her. So I think it's just about trying to work out how the best fit. And I feel like with Black Stinia, she does something completely different. She'll stretch the back line. And I w- I'd be interested to see them both playing together. I think unless you're playing off of Black Stinia, they both do opposite movements. Obviously, you know better than most in regards to being a striker. So it'd be interesting to see if you can sort of potentially get them to, to, to work together and, and have both in there. Yeah, I agree with you on that. I think we don't see many coaches playing that kind of old school 4-4-2, you know, tall striker, tall striker, little striker. Do you know what I mean? We don't see that very often. Now, another one of your former sides, Chelsea, quadruple hopes are over, but there's still a lot to play for. It's hard to imagine, you know, Emma Hayes could end her tenure at Chelsea without a trophy, isn't it? Isn't that incomprehensible to think about? Because it's a possibility. Yeah, it is. And I also think sometimes... Obviously, when Emma announced leaving, you know, there was all this, right, quadruple, quadruple, quadruple. That's a lot of pressure to put on on a, on a, on a manager, on a set of players. Um, and then also there's the whole talk of Champions League, Champions League. She wants to win it. She goes to the US. She's not, Obviously, she's going from club to international. So there's all of this fixated on, on, on doing that and bringing that home. And it's not going to be an easy feat. You're going to have to go and play Barcelona. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's going to be tough. And I think they are... Look, they look tired yesterday. I think they've had a they've had a tough couple of weeks. Obviously, Ajax game wasn't just a simple, easy game as well. They made rotations for it, but yeah, I think there is a lot of pressure, and I think a lot of the outside talk probably doesn't help that either. Yeah, let's hear from Emma Hayes now. She spoke in a post match press conference about the interaction between herself and Arsenal manager Jonas Sidibo after the game. Listen, I think there's a way to conduct yourself on the touchline. I really do, and I. I think that it's absolutely essential we role model in the right way. But I'm not down for male aggression on the touchline. I'm not. And fronting up with players, for me, that's unacceptable. And, yeah, I was disappointed. And I told Jonas that. Um, I don't think it's okay to behave like that. Um, He got a yellow card. And, in fact, he probably should have been sent off. I'm all for competing to win. I've never been booked in 12 years you know, my time here, I totally accept he's a winner and he wants to win, but his behaviour on the touchline wasn't acceptable. Now, Jill, we touched upon it earlier on in the show. You know, it's not something you usually see within the women's game. So everyone goes crazy when there's pretty normal things happen in the men's game on the sideline. I know Emma wasn't happy with the way Jonas Edeval, you know, was, was acting on the sideline. There was a little altercation with him and Erin Cuthbert. What did you make of it all? Well, uh, when he obviously explained afterwards, he said the reason was is because Arsenal wanted multi-ball, Chelsea wanted one ball. Then obviously Chelsea then are in a situation where they want to speed the game up and want to go for multi-ball. So I can understand him doing it because I'd be a bit like, hold on a minute, you you asked for that. So it's just obviously then it's it's going to be heated on the sideline. And and I've always been a player, Lee, where something happens on the pitch, it's done and dusted. We don't, I don't take that off. Like I've had full-blown rags on the pitch, but when you come on pitch, you're giving each other a hug. Like it's football, emotions are high and. Yeah, I do think in, when anything happens in a women's game, it's like, ah, everyone needs to talk about it and escalate further. And 
probably the best time not to talk about it is after the game when your emotions are, are running high. Yeah, I agree with that. And I think, yeah, you're right. Exactly spot on, Jill. And obviously the use of VAR within the game as well. It's not something we have in the women's game. We have it over here in the NWSL in America. What did you make of the use of it? And obviously Erin Cuthbert, Emma Hayes has been a real big advocate of VAR. And I completely <laughs> understand why. But she probably would have wished that yesterday it wasn't in play, right? It was a correct decision. Maya Ramirez ended up scoring in the end. But what did you make of how it was used within the game yesterday? Yeah, I mean, I think it was important that it was used because... If that, that if that's not used and the referee don't doesn't see it, Chelsea have won their up. And I think even watch it back in slow mo, Erin knows exactly what she's doing. Like is she? And in all fairness, it probably should be a book 